What's going on, guys? How's it going? Happy Monday out there. Well, okay, as happy as a Monday can be. Uh, how's the weekend? How'd you guys do? Did anything interesting? Um, as I had planned, I watched myself a bunch of football. And, uh, yeah, I got no one left to root for anymore, so I just... I was watching the playoff games, hoping to watch some good games, and man, was I shortchanged. Four games over the weekend, and all four of them are pretty much crap. <laughs> so, um, why am I looking kind of blue today? That's kind of interesting. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do some on-the-fly adjustments here. One sec here. Let's see if that's better. Yeah. Yeah, still a little blue. Anyways. Okay, so we got some interesting colors going on here, but that's fine. How you guys doing? How's it going? Um, I did actually make a little headway over the weekend. As I said, I was watching a ton of football, and that was, considering that was, what, four games, three hours apiece, so that was, you know, 12 plus hours worth of, uh, I'd like to say, yeah, pretty much wasted time, man. I could have just watched the recap of those games. They were very uneventful. Um, not much to really root for there, but, um, like I said, my, my team's been out for a while, so, you know, I just watched and watched some good football and came up completely empty handed this weekend. Anyways, um, still did actually manage to find a little time, so, uh, I'll drag up my little to-do list here. If you guys will see that, um, yeah, I haven't really double-checked these guys, but, um, <coughs> excuse me, this is the stuff I plow through over the weekend, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight of the tasks that I want to knock out, I think I pretty much have a good handle on, which is cool. And then as for what I'm going to handle today, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I got a few things I need to still deal with, but um, once again, this is my post-beta remaining tasks that, you know, if I can get through these items, right, then I feel comfortable Hopefully, if everything works, then I feel comfortable actually unleashing the game to the proper public, not just in a beta test. Which, uh, by the way, uh, you can see on the, the stuff down below on the Twitch page, if you guys like to try out the beta version, it is now out for iOS, Android, and PC. So, um, if you like to give it a try, please do. Let me know what you think. Uh, also, especially if you find any bugs. And... Uh, several people have actually pointed out that there's no credits yet, which, <laughs> if you guys are watching the stream, yeah, you know that, because I talked about that. I have not added any kind of uh, uh, credits yet, but I may do that today, just so I can get a new version out there, and I can stop getting notes about, you have no credits, man. I mean, right now, <laughs> right now you hit the credits button, and it does a whole bunch of nothing, as you guys probably remember. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, I need to add that, but... Uh, Cockies. Hey, welcome. Uh, just wanted to say your streams are inspirational and has motivated me to seriously get back into game development. Dude, that's awesome, man. Cockies, that's that's totally cool. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you're liking it. It's just me kind of plugging away, but I mean, I'm, I'm glad that's an inspiration for you, man. Thank you so much. I'm totally flattered. That's totally cool, man. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, definitely jump in, you know. Uh, the only warning is that it is insanely addictive. I mean, I do love doing this stuff, man. I uh, wish it did it better, but still trying to get better over time. See, now I'm looking a little dark now, too. Yeah, I can't I can't get my lighting working today. I'm not happy with it. I've got everything turned on, but oh well. I'll leave it be. Um, but yeah, so I need to do the credits because as several point uh, people have pointed out, I hit the credits button, nothing happens. I know because there's nothing there yet. Uh, but I, I guess I'll throw that in there today. Um, let's see. You know, it's on my list. I'm not sure if I want to tackle that first. Ooh, wow, did a sub, man. Thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you, man. And then we also had Anonymous just subscribed. <laughs> Thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> so, am I saying that right? Cockeyes? Uh, cockies? I'm not sure which way to pronounce that, but uh, either way, man, thank you so much for the subscription, man. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. Very cool. Yeah, and um, when you jump back in, definitely let me know how it's going on your end, for sure. Um, you know, if you want to talk about what you're working on or if you have any questions, I will try my best. 
you know, on the art animation side, I can definitely offer more feedback. On the coding side, I can do what I can. But uh, usually there's some guys hanging out here that are, like, exponentially better at the uh, the coding that can probably offer uh, help and feedback as well. Uh, I'll be watching the stream on the side and hacking on Unity on the other screen. Nice. I love it. That's cool, man. So do you have a game in mind? Or do you have something planned out? Or are you just going to kind of wing it? kind of spaghetti concept, you know, just throw stuff together and see what sticks on the wall? Or do you already have a grand plan on what you want to tackle? I'm always curious to see what other people are working on. Um, yeah, I'm not one of those, you know, only my game. I mean, I, I definitely love seeing other people's projects. So, yeah, feel free to share. Um, so, let's see. I got that. Let me bring up my to-do list here. Uh, ability to show news at game start. I guess I could start playing with that too. I'm gonna have to do some stuff <clears throat> on the server side, so I may bump that down. I don't know if you guys want to be subjected to me trying to do server setup stuff, so I'll bump that a little further down. <clears throat> Excuse me. If the player levels up, oh, this is a good one. Um, I'm just making prototype games. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Just did my lunch there. Uh, I'm just making prototype games at the moment to get experience, but I do have a few serious ideas, but need to learn a lot more first. That's a perfect approach, man. Um, and that's one of the great things about Unity is throwing prototypes together quickly is so viable. And uh, that's awesome, man. So yeah, do, do prototypes, especially prototypes that touch on areas that you are not totally comfortable with, but you think that's something that you will use in the future, then absolutely, man. Go that route, put together some prototypes, and then once you have all that uh, bundled up, then you're ready to, to tackle your first game. Um, and as I say every time, too, if you're, you're starting on your first game project, definitely start small. You know, uh, As I said, my, my very first one was a five-card draw poker, which I thought was going to be so easy to knock out. And then the more I started working on it, the more I realized that I was way off base. So whatever you think, whatever game you first imagine, right, you know, unless it's like click button and make something iterate up. If that's the entire game, then you have a decent chance of banging through it. But anything you come up with and you kind of have this notion in your head how long it's going to take you, yeah, you're completely wrong. It will com it, it will be way beyond that. Um, just personal experience of like what I think an, uh, a task will take, yeah, I'm never on board with that. It ends up being so much more. But uh, yeah, good luck with that, man. I hope that... Uh, I hope that you get up to speed very quick and start working on your own stuff. But uh, even the prototypes, I think, are kind of cool. I like doing prototypes right before I go to the conventions. I talked about that before because it's just a, a fantastic way. And, then I, you know, I don't go to the gaming conventions. I go to more comic book conventions because, number one, they're usually cheaper. Number two, you're not surrounded by 5,000 other games. You know, so you get more people willing to test your game. And that's what I use them for is testing. So I go to the conventions. I let people test out the games and see if uh, I have something that's worth pursuing. So uh, that's, that's my own methodology, but I, I love throwing prototypes together, give myself like a week or two just to like slap something together. Uh, yeah, that's smart. Uh, I appreciate the advice. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm here in Las Vegas, and there's a couple of them out here. There's the uh, Level Up Expo, which is still game-oriented, but because there's, honestly, there's so few game developers out here in Las Vegas, and it's still a, a relatively new kind of convention, that there's not a ton that you're competing with. It's not like a, it's not like, you know, a PAX or anything like a, you know, GDC or anything where you're just surrounded by games everywhere. Um, and also there's like the amazing Comic Con, which is the Las Vegas equivalent of the one there in San Diego. But yeah, and because of the novelty factor, because you have this game where everyone else has got comics and toys and trinkets and all kinds of crap and, and original art that they're creating. And then suddenly you have this little cabinet, right? Uh, and then you're showing your game off, you know, people are kind of like, wait, what is this? You know, so it does help to stick out. And if you use it not as a tool to promote the game, you can, but you won't make your money back if you just use a promotion tool. But if you use it as a inexpensive uh, quality testing, and it, it is the cheapest way to do QA, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would have never thought about that before. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And I would love to say, you know, I would love to lie to you and tell you that this was actually all part of a grand plan. But no, in reality, um, I'm fortunate enough to actually go to the San Diego Comic-Con and have a table there. Uh, I, I can literally say that I married into it. My wife has been doing uh, San Diego Comic-Con for just years and years and years. 
and I went with her back in like uh, like 2009 and I was just helping her set up, right? And then she was sharing the table and that person dropped out. So that was in 2010. I just finished my first game. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll go promote my game and I'll do like, you know, gangbusters, right? I'll get this giant spike. And then I spent all that money to promote my first game and it just went bump. You know, I mean, it had nothing in terms of actual sales because back then in 2010, you could actually sell your game. My first game is 99 cents. Everything after that's been free to play, of course. But uh, so then I told my wife, I was kind of like, you know what? I'm out. You know, this is this is not worth the money to me. Right. I'm losing all this money. And then she was like, you know, trying to cajole me into doing it. And then the next year rolled around and I was in the middle of development on my next game. And I just went, you know what? I'll bring this. It's not done, but I'll bring it out there. And um, yeah. So then I set it up and that's when I, yeah, I had that eureka moment. It's kind of like, why didn't I think about this before? Right. Because I'm just sitting there watching everyone play the game. Right. And just as long as you don't intervene, just as long as you let them go, right, you can learn so much, you know, and especially because a lot of the times you're dealing with non-gamers, right? And if you're doing mobile, that's going to happen more often than anything. If you're doing console games and you know that by and large your market is going to be regular gamers, but when you have non-gamers, that's when you can find issues in the game that a regular gamer could overcome, but a non-gamer might get stuck on. And that gives you an insight into, oh, I really got to fix this and make this much more explanatory. Right. And um, then that, that's, you know, Volley Village is now three years in the making and, and three years worth of conventions and stuff to um, to get the proper uh, setup, you know. And yeah, it still bugged me. I'm sorry. I'm going to tweak my lights yet again. Sorry, guys. Let me try that. Let's see. That's a little bit. You know, I don't know why. It seems like my, my web camera is just doing some goofy stuff on me today. It just really wants to. Make me blue. Hey, Walkin' Talkin', Walkin Talkin' Stephen Hawkins is here. Sorry I'm late. No, 13 minutes, man. You're doing fine. I had already gone to sleep when I got an email saying you were alive. <laughs> you're still asleep. This is actually a dream, right? You just think you're watching me. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> so I'm just running my mouth. Hadn't really gotten anywhere yet. So I'm just kind of chatting. Uh... Kakis is talking about getting back into the game dev stuff, which I always encourage because it is a ton of fun. Um, you know, and I mean, you know, like I said, it's it's totally destroyed my gameplay time, right? I mean, I'm an avid gamer, but just have not. Uh, time zones are boring. <laughs> I appreciate the story; it's very inspiring. Thanks, man. And I mean, just total truth. But um, um, oh, I totally lost my train of thought there. I was talking about the uh, the game dev stuff, but. Um, yeah, I guess it's just, oh, no, that's it, because I'm doing all the, you know, to me, making a, a video game is actually kind of like a very drawn-out logic puzzle video game, <laughs> you know. <laughs> May I have a brief uh, rundown of the story? Uh, just, okay, uh, just to recap, I was just talking about the fact that, you know, I use uh, non-game conventions. I go to comic book conventions, and that's where I show my games off, and I use them as, as a testing facility, right? And it's an inexpensive way to do you know, quality testing and find out if, you know, game testing, just see if you have uh, game potential there and a way to get feedback on the fly from non-gamers, right? And uh, I was just uh, telling Kaka that it was not something that I thought about and planned. It was something that I stumbled into. My wife has been doing San Diego Comic-Con for ages and I was sharing the table with her when her partner dropped out. And I, at first I was using it to promote my games and realized that was a waste of money but then started showing games in development, and that's when I realized how brilliant this was, right? Because, you know, for uh, a fraction of what it would cost you to hire some company to game test, you can have, in San Diego Comic-Con, you have a potential of 145,000 people walking up, maybe, in checking out your game, you know? And, of course, you get nothing like that, but, I mean, I, I definitely have hundreds of people that stroll by, Right, and even that is still inexpensive compared to what you'd normally pay in those kind of situations to get a game properly tested, you know. And I mean, it's just and it's all honesty, you know. You know these people are playing it, and when they offer their thoughts, you know they're totally genuine in their thoughts. You know, they're not, you know, <laughs> they don't know you, they don't care about you, they don't care. It's not like you're getting a paycheck based on your feedback. So they will tell you, you know, it's like what's the game? Yeah, yeah, and you kind of go okay, <laughs> you know. But uh, and then you have someone that offers suggestions. There's been stuff that I've added in the game over the last three years that have come exclusively based on suggestions from people. 
you know, and that's just a fantastic way to get some really, really uh, honest feedback, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a smart way around everything. <laughs> well, like I said, I would love to say that I had this grand notion in my head that this is, <laughs> you know, this is the way to go. But no, I really did just stumble into it. You know, it was I was going to abandon Comic Con altogether. You know, but then when I realized an alternate way of of using it, just because I had a game in development and I didn't have anything else to show, so I threw it out there. You know, <coughs> excuse me. You know, and then that's when I kind of realized, oh, this is what I should have been doing all along. And that's what I have been doing. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, um, uh, user group meetings are always a good way. But the problem with that is that once you've shown it a couple times, you know, everyone knows it. And then, like, here locally in Las Vegas, I go to – I co-host the Unity meetings, right? And I brought the game out. And I, I did one uh, last showing a couple of months ago. And my partner's, and he's like, it was a show and tell kind of thing. And I was kind of like, well, I could show the, the progress. My buddy's like, okay, one more time. <laughs> you know, because at this point, everyone knows the game, forwards and backwards, you know. But getting it out to the other places, you know, like I said, in, here in Vegas, I have the Las Vegas uh, Level Up Expo, as well as the Amazing Comic Con and a couple other conventions, you know. And that's a super way of just getting people that never seen the game, right, that are just seeing they see it, you know. And then first off... If they're interested, they'll come up, right? So then, at least in theory, someone that, that comes up to check out the game has already shown some interest, you know? And they give it a try, and then you can see if they just kind of, you know, shrug and walk away. And if you have a predominance of people that do that, then then you know that, wow, maybe the game will not connect with people. But conversely, you know, if you see people playing it, and, you know, my favorite thing is when they come back a couple times during the convention and play it again, you know, then you know you're probably onto something, you know? And that's what you're shooting for. You know, and of course the feedback, getting responses from people and getting a better idea of how to improve the game. That is always, always fantastic. So I, I always make notes on that too when people offer suggestions. You know, and not everything that is offered is viable or even like, you know, necessarily a great idea. But, you know, there, there are plenty that are, you know. So that's a big thing for me. Um... I guess I could get started on something simple with handling the credits, since so many of you guys that have been testing it have mentioned the fact that there are no credits. So I guess I can go ahead and just drop that in right now. But um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that's new that you guys wouldn't have seen? Um, I just fixed little things. I, I noticed that um, in a two-player game, and this is obscure stuff, the two-player game, the red uh, player, if you change the launcher to something else, like uh, here, I'll give an example because I think I have my launchers unlocked. Uh, I would love to go to a con at some point, but there are not many local or that I could go to uh, my friends with. Oh, what? That, okay. Uh, I'm going to go to TwitchCon, though, with some people I met online. Oh, that's awesome. Dude, that's cool. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, check around, though. I mean, make sure there's... I mean, it may not be like a big convention, but um, have you ever been to any other cons? Um, yeah, uh, I, I, I used to do WonderCon, um, Comic-Con, um, let's see, the Amazing Comic-Con here, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I am fortunate here in Las Vegas that there's a couple of conventions I could do to do that are actually local in my backyard and convenient. Um, excuse me, San Diego Comic-Con is the only one that I, I do that's pretty much out of state. You know, it's just, once you start adding in the costs of, the travel and all the expense of getting there, and then most importantly, the hotel. You know, uh, to be honest, uh, San Diego Comic Con would not be financially viable for me uh, if it weren't for the fact that my wife has a friend that lives 45 minutes north of the the convention center. So we actually, she's nice enough to put us up every year. You know, so we just we sleep there and drive into the convention in the in the mornings. And I mean, it 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 sucks that you know we, we have like a couple hours with the drive time every day but it saves us literally on the hotels you know as a as an exhibitor you basically have to be there almost a full week or more and the hotels are going to run you well over a thousand fifteen hundred dollars or more right and that's just for the hotel right so you know cutting out that expense alone makes you know it more viable but that's going to be true of any kind of convention especially any high profile convention you go to is traditionally the hotels get their prices jacked up. 
So, I mean, that's uh, like packs, you know, I mean, if you look at the, the prices for the hotels for packs, man, those get nutty. So, um, you know, to me, that's one of the reasons why I also kind of just stick local is the fact that it's just, it's much more financially viable for me, you know. But it, I guess it's one of the things that if you can find friends to split the cost with a hotel room, you know, that then it's a, a much better uh, cost kind of factor. But, you know, with my wife, you know, that's that's kind of a non-starter, you know. You know, hey, honey, we're going to have three of my friends crashing with us. You know, no, <laughs> you know, just no. <laughs> Hotels are so expensive. It's almost just a good idea in theory. True. Yeah, that is true. Um you know, if you can find a hotel that's far enough out and you can just drive in and then if you can split that cost with a couple of friends that go with you and you can split up the cost, then it might be, you know, more viable. But otherwise, yeah, it is just super expensive, which is one of the key reasons why I have not pursued. I mean, there's there's some there's like uh, Arizona that's not too far away from me and there's some nice ones up there. Um, but I just, you know, I haven't really bothered, you know, and it's also a matter of what I have to test, uh, the timing works pretty well, um, you know, with the, the Las Vegas, uh, Level Up Expo, right, followed by the, uh, the San Diego, which, uh, a couple of months apart, so it's good spacing for me, right, to try the first one, get the game ready for that, right, and then get some feedback, and then do some adjustments in time for San Diego, so that's always kind of a good plan, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so I guess what I should do is, let's see, I don't think there's anything that pops up on this. Uh, nope, okay. So let me start with this bad boy. And we'll actually do some progress here. Go, um, come at it that way. Credits button, options menu, all right. There he goes, okay. So, well, let's do a credits menu. And I'll just have it overlay on top of this. So let me go, I'm gonna start with, oh, do it up here. Let's create an invisible widget, like so. And I don't think I have any of this stuff actually, no, I don't have the, any of this stuff anchored. So it just kind of scales on the fly, which I guess I'll follow suit with that, so. We'll just say this is a credits group. Yep. All right. The first thing I do is um, actually let's figure out what this widget is. 552. So we'll crank this up to like 560. The layering here to make sure that you know my 2D sprites are laying the way, layering the way I want it to. So we'll start with the credits group and. I guess, no, even that one is free. So I'm just gonna leave this like, oh, I'll space it out. Just 1280, 720. I don't have to do that, but I'll just have it line up. So that way all my stuff sits in, inside of it. Not that it's necessary. Um, so the black transparent, I'm gonna duplicate him and then throw him in my credits group. And I'll get rid of that little one there. All right. So then this is credit screw 560, so we're going to make this 561. And now that's over on top of everything, so good start there. Create sprite child. Nope, not him. <laughs> GUI. Sprite. And then, let's see. Yeah, I'll go with this guy. Snap him. Yeah, the proportions are right. So I guess I could either, um, let's see. Either do it this way, and I can like stretch and squash to get it to where I want, and I start getting that thinness on the edges. So I can either do it that way. Um, do you say GUI instead of uh, GUI? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, but I, I just you know anything I can say faster, I'm all for. So I say GUI. Uh, uh, yeah, UI GUI. I think it's all kind of one and the same, right? But uh, it's just fun to say, anyways. Gooey. <laughs> As you can see, I'm using easily. Um, all right, I'm gonna. I'll start with this. I'll call this credits background. That's good. Create. Uh, in this case, now we got to start creating some text. So a child. It always starts with a gradient. 
The grading is kind of nice, but I like it just to be more solid color. Although the pure white, I think, is blown out sometimes, so I'll dial it down just a little bit so it's not like pure, pure white. Alright. Oops. And then drag them up here. Like so. And then I can come back. Initially, I'll just start off with just the text. I may come back and start tweaking colors and size and all that kind of stuff. But just to begin with, we'll start with just white and credits. And then we have so much room that I'll beef this up. 80. That's pretty insane. So if we... Yeah, you can see... Uh, I don't know if it registers with all the compression, but this is about as big as I want to make the text before it starts breaking down. You know, and it starts looking a little soft. But I, this is okay, but that's definitely as far as I want to go with it in terms of size. All right, so that's good. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. This is kind of awkward because I never, you know, and some of my previous ones, what I've done is, like, uh, I think Save the Titanic might be one where I did it where it says, in the credits, it says uh, voice, uh, VO, voiceover work done by Ed Mace. Everything else by Dustin. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I don't know because it is, you know, just me. Um, I mean, I could do like a company plug. I could say, you know, uh, produced by Scary Robot Productions, but that's still just me, you know. So I always kind of get awkward when I do these stupid credit ones, you know, until I actually get like a full team and it feels more legit. You know, it's just kind of a weird thing. Uh... <laughs> All right, create label, child, uh, <laughs> make it go out of the box. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, make the size go like that. And then, let's see, can I actually highlight this? I can. There you go. Done. There you go. Done. Hey, that's it. I'm done for the day. I'll just, you know, knock off and just call it quits. <laughs> Walk and talk to Stephen Hawking got his credit. <laughs> we'll just say uh, here we go uh, say there you go oh I had the cap reversed oh well <laughs> there it goes <laughs> it was stressful <laughs> I don't even remember making it you know I just woke up and it was done you know it's like that's what happens when you're just so brilliant you just you know you go to sleep, you wake up, and you've made a game. But, you know, that's what it's like being uh, walking, talking Stephen Hawkins. You know, it just happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I can do this at least. Um, oh, I'm going to have to shrink it down for this. Character uh, designs. Designs. And then... Kick that down to 60, something like that, maybe. All right. I guess I should actually be cool and throw up an actual, like, link. Uh, I won't make it a hot link, but, I mean, it's one of those things that someone can see it and make a mental note. But, um, yeah, you know what? That's a cool thing. Because Daniel is this stupid, amazingly talented artist. Thomas art I mean this is what I'm talking about this is so the guy that designed my characters and he's designed some of my stuff in previous games this is his art page you know that you look at this and you kind of go you know what I'm just never gonna draw again because I can't come look at this this guy is just scary talented I mean that is just absolutely freaking gorgeous uh, you can make the credits a slidey thing with one slide for each person. <laughs> That's a little overkill, don't you think? <laughs> I think it, you know, people pop it up, they look at it and kind of go, yeah, whatever, and then close it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to actually give him um, a uh, an actual link here like that. I don't think he'll mind. Um, I really love programming, but making good-looking art is black magic to me. Yeah, I'm kind of the inverse, you know. The the art is a little easier for me, uh, although I'm no Daniel Thomas. But, um, yeah, the programming is always the challenge for me. You know what? Actually, I could just do it this way. If I knock it down, then it fits nicely. Like so. Um, anything with programming is black magic to me. <laughs> Any <And the> art. 
<laughs> it's one of those things. Yeah, I don't necessarily know how to make a game, but I know when a game is good, right? <laughs> um, you know, actually, I'm gonna knock this down again. To I think that's good. Push this up a little bit. Um, yeah, and the reason why is because I'm also gonna so I'm gonna do that. Uh, and then Daniel credit, and then another D me credit. Drag this down here. Just say game created by. That pretty much encompasses everything. And I lowercase my last name. I'm disrespecting myself now. Uh, I just do a scary robot. Yeah. Like that. And then um, also I want to give credit. There's one of the guys that hangs out here too. And I got his proper name. Um, I, I, I guess he won't mind me throwing the name out there. Because he did give me uh, his name. So one of the guys that hangs out on the feed here it hit me up a couple days ago once I did the release and he asked me, he said, you know, do you mind if I try and hack your game? I was like, no, dude, absolutely, man. Go to town. I'm, yeah, please. You know, because that, I have no concept of any of that kind of stuff, right? So yeah, let me know if you have any success on anything, right? He comes back the next morning and he goes, yeah, um, yeah, I, I hacked your game. I, I decompiled it. I got all your code. And I can mess with all your values. And it's kind of like, <laughs> crap. <laughs> you know? And you're like, <laughs> excuse me. He takes a screenshot. A screenshot and he goes, yeah, here you go. Here's some of your code. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's my code. Which is worse because I'm not even sure which one is more embarrassing. The fact that my code was so exposed or the fact that the, the, the people that would decompile it would look at my code and go, oh, dude, seriously? This code is crap, man. <laughs> you know? Wow, this guy knows has no clue what he's doing, you know. So, anyways, yeah, he was really cool about it. He was he was giving me some suggestions, and I ended up finding uh, a couple of plugins. Um, let me see. Actually, I guess I can bring this up over here. Um, and where's my favorite stuff? I'm not even signed in. How is that possible? I sign in now. Sign in. There we are. Sweet, there we go. Um, hey, Fletcher King's here. Uh, you can de decompile most Unity games because you can compile C Sharp. However, if you use Unity 2018 and use uh, IL2CPP, <coughs> excuse me, it compiles your game to native code, so you can't do that. Um, yeah, Fletcher King, yeah, uh, perfect. So, um, Kakis, uh, you're totally right, but if you look up here, I don't know if you can see it, but when my mouse is pointing, that is Unity 5.0. Six. Uh, I'm. I haven't even moved up to 2017, much less 2018. Uh, primarily because I have a pro license for this version of Unity, which doesn't translate to a subscription. Uh, combined with the fact that th when I tried to bump the game as a test up to 2018, <coughs> excuse me, it broke a ton. It broke a ton. So it was easier just to stay in 5.6 land for this one. The next game, yeah, absolutely. But for this one, uh, Fletcher King is absolutely onto something. Um, yeah, it messes stuff up. Yeah. So if we come back to where did I just um, so check this out. Um, go to my favorites. Excuse me. Uh, this check this out. So 40 bucks gets you Obfuscator. Excuse me. Sorry. Just burping like crazy here. Obfuscator Pro. So this is pretty awesome. So this is what you start with. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Okay. Can I zoom in at all, or is it going to be... A yeah, there he goes. So, yeah, here's, like, regular code. And then once you throw the obfuscator on there, boom, you got garbage code. So, that's awesome. Uh, it doesn't make it uh, impossible to hack, of course, but it makes it a bigger challenge. And I'm less concerned about... If people want to, like, break into the game and steal coins, right, I'm totally fine with that. You know, if someone's going to steal the coins and the characters out of the game, then they weren't going to be a customer anyways. What I'm more concerned about is people that would actually cheat, you know, and then make it so that someone else trying to play the game legitimately gets wiped by someone that's cheating. And that's the stuff that scares me. Uh, it makes your garbage code look even worse. 
<laughs> no, no, no. It makes it look much better, right? Because if they look at it, it's all the garbage code, they don't actually realize how poorly the code is written. So they just see garbage code and they go, all they can look at and say is go, wow, it's really well formatted. You know, so, so no, Abuscator is actually a double win for me. It protects the code and protects my ego. So, I mean, this is money well spent, right? <laughs> um, and the other thing too, was the fact that he was pointing out the fact that once he has a sense, even if the obfuscator still makes the code vulnerable, but he was able to muck with the codes, uh, the, the values rather. So like, you know, instant health, right? And then the timing on the firing and all that kind of stuff. So the other thing I found was this anti-cheat by the same developer, right? That works better. And he was talking about adding a checksum, right? Which is way beyond me. But that in essence is what this plugin does is it does a, you know, verifies the values as they go along and the beauty of it is you don't have to change your code you just drop it in with the prefab and it protects the variables um probably not impossible to beat but once again knocks out most people that want to screw with it you know and that's what i'm shooting for um it will obfuscate uh obfuscate the class names as well so it's even more difficult exactly yeah, it checks for programs trying to modify the game during runtime. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, anything that looks like it's getting mucked with and it will wreak havoc on it. So so yeah, it's, you know, I, I not that I want to spend 60 bucks, but, you know, if 60 bucks is what saves my game from being exploited and, you know, more importantly, makes it unplayable for online players because there's all these cheats, you know, right? Then, then it's money well spent, I think. Uh, won't stop people with their own kernel, but hey, it's better than nothing, right? Um, yeah, yeah, true. But um, I mean, that's but that's still that's much more on a PC side versus uh, iOS and Android, you know. But this does go back to one of the key reasons where I talked about before, you know, was like I'm so apprehensive about doing desktop versions because I think they're so much easier to exploit. Oh, about to spill my drink here. There he goes. Sorry, just. Refill my drink. Uh, I just, you know, iOS and Android is just by nature is a little more cumbersome to muck with than a PC game, considering the PC game is just sitting there right in front of you. But, uh, yeah, it won't stop them, no. But, you know, the hopes are that, you know, the people that actually try and cheat, which, I mean, it kind of sucks, you know. It's like, what you're telling me is that you suck at the game so bad that you have to cheat in order to win a game, you know. So you doubly suck, you know. Uh, yeah, PC is definitely much easier to exploit. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to steal the characters, you know, if you're going to steal coins, you know, do it. You know, that only hurts me, right? You know, it sucks that I'm not going to get any money off of you, but that's fine. You know, but when you screw the game up, right, and make it so all the other people can't enjoy it, now you're pissing me off, you know. Now that's when I want to, like, find you, you know, and then just, you know, ban you, <laughs> you know, as best I can. Uh, if you have a leaderboard, it will encourage them to do so even more. They just love being number one. Funny story. I've mentioned this before, but, um, yeah, so one of my previous games, uh, Save the Titanic, on Android, somebody figured out an exploit that allows you to, uh, you know, come up with this insane value. It was like, it was something stupid. It's like, like 150 trillion points or something like that. And this is a game where most people score like 5, 10, 15,000 points. And, like, five people had, like, gone to the trouble of, like, using this hack just so they could get their name at the top of the leaderboards. And it's kind of like, why? You know, because you see that number, you don't go, wow, that person's fantastic. You look at that number and you kind of go, wow, that person just used the hack, you know? And it was easy enough to fix because I just dropped the, the value for the high end down a little bit to, like, a million points. And then those scores all went away. But you're so right, man. People will just go nuts for that leaderboard stuff. Uh, there's nothing you can really do if someone is serious, uh, reverse engineering expert, but those tools will stop 99%, and that's all I'm hoping for. Absolutely, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So that 1%, that's gonna be like the little virus floating around that will screw up some people's games, which will suck, but hopefully that's not enough that the vast majority of people playing the game are gonna have just a regular challenging game. Uh, if you're on the leaderboard, it's easier to ban you. Oh, well, and it also because, I mean, if someone can tell me who they were playing, right, you know, that's another way, too, that I can try and track down, and um, because I have all the user data, too, so if this person is winning 100% of the games, and they're playing, like, 100 games, chances are good that they're cheating, right, you know, I mean, you can't win 100 games in a row, right, I mean, 
I made the game, and I still lose. You see me lose when I was playing before, so it can happen. Uh, it makes me mad seeing games like the uh, new Forza. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, that sucks. And such with the fastest times or longest time in the air after jump. Some insane numbers, like over a minute. Imagine in Forza jumping a car and being in the air for over a minute legitimately. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know? You know, and so the other side of this too is I've mentioned this before. Um, I'm not a major online multiplayer uh, gamer. Uh, there's, I mean, I, I total confession. I mean, part of that is because I don't have time to do it anymore. But there was one, uh, and this is goes back uh, to the '90s. Uh, Midtown Madness. So this is, uh, so check this out, images. So this was a driving game called Midtown Madness that I played incessantly right and it was like they had an online multiplayer game where the idea was you had cops and robbers right and then uh, there'd be uh, money and you have to run up to the money and then cops would drive it back to the bank robbers would drive it to their hideout and I played the game so much that I got so good that I was constantly getting uh, booted out of matches because people assumed that I was cheating <laughs> you know and it's like it's, it sucked because then I, I get passed by a Volkswagen, right? You can see a little vac Volkswagen here. I get passed by a Volkswagen that's doing 200 miles an hour and the wheels are missing. And I look at a guy and going, no, that guy's cheating, right? I'm just playing well, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing you want to avoid, right? You want to have a game that's fun to play, right? That doesn't get exploited, you know? And like I said, if you want to steal the stuff, steal the stuff, right? I'm, I'm not going to throw my hands over that, but... Don't screw the game up for everyone else. That's all I'm asking. So that's the game plan there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the whole reason I brought that up is because this very uh, uh, knowledgeable individual came back and said that he could exploit the crap out of my game. So I'll, I'll add those plugins. But I also told him because he was so helpful, right? And he was like, I mean, he spent some serious time, I, I'd assume, digging through there and showing all the stuff. And uh, I don't think he's shown up today yet. Um, but I want to give him credit. And he did give me his name, so I gotta dig that up here. So bear with me one sec, because I'm gonna add his name. Let me go back. Oh, whoops. Why do I not have no messages? Library? Friends? Oh, here we go. Uh, yep, yep, boom. Okay. Let me get the name. Sorry, I'm just digging this up here. There he goes. Let me do a copy there. Let me switch back. There we go. Okay. So, hope he doesn't mind me doing this here, but it's gonna. I'm gonna be putting it out here anyways later on. So now is the time. Um. Yeah, there's a child. And what was I saying? That was fifty. Yeah, fifty. And I'll throw this out like so, like so. Uh, revealing a hacker's n <laughs> nickname. <laughs> No, no, but this was, I mean, this wasn't even really hacking, right? This was just the, the basic uh, getting a decompiler, right, and doing it, which, I mean, I'm completely ignorant of, you know. So, and I mean, the fact they asked permission, too, that was, I thought that was, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly, it's more security. Um, yeah, to me, it was just a fantastic gesture, and I was really appreciative that he did it, because I would have just thrown the game out there, right? And it would have been hacked to hell and back, right, without that plug-in. You know, uh, uh, tech, tech, nickel support. All right, and I'll change his name out there. So, yep. Sorry, buddy, I'm throwing you out there, but then you gave me your name and asked me, and you said I was permission to do that. So he's included in the credits just because I I am very thankful for his help there. Although my color level is a little different there. Oh, I got that up to two five five, don't I? Um, what did I do this one at? Two, 42. I'll do the same for all these guys. 242. But I said I was going to do it, and I definitely want to give him credit, right? And besides, otherwise, the stupid credit page is going to be too empty anyways, so. <laughs> there you go. I mean, he did go out of his way to help me out in this stuff, so. Let me set this up. Oops. Tab 242, 242. There it goes. And then compressing that down as 23, negative 23. There we go. Uh, let's see. 
uh, it's actually scary how easy it is to keep decompile most Unity games. You just download any free de decompiler and you can view the source code. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I mean, I, I've been doing this for 10 years and never even really thought about it. But, I mean, the key reason, obviously, is the fact that I've been in mobile land, right? Not that it's impossible for iOS and Android, but it's just a lot harder. You know, PC is, boom, it's right there, of course, right? Even I could do it, you know. But uh, since this one has a greater possibility of actually getting a PC release, yeah, I, I have to be much more mindful of it this time. Uh, that's part of why they're pushing the new uh, IL2CPP stuff, yeah. Uh, which, actually, is there any way to say that faster? Just say IL2... Ilk, ilk, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't roll off the tongue like GUI does. So I'll just say that stuff, uh, which actually turns your uh, C sharp into C plus plus native code. Interesting. So, but it still leaves it as native code, so it's still exposed. It just means it's a different language, and you have to know C plus plus to mess with it, or you'd have to somehow convert the C plus plus back into C sharp. I'm not sure, but you know, either way, I guess. Uh, Oh, native code can't be decompiled. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So the next game. I will definitely be moving up to 2018 for the next game. I do promise. Because there are some nice new bells and whistles that I would like to incorporate. But this bad boy is staying in 5.6 land for the foreseeable future. Excuse me. Uh, it requires a much more serious skill set and expensive tools. I like the sound of that. There you go. So, yeah, and I think the next one, once you guys see what the next game is all about, um, it will definitely be much more high profile um, and then much closer to hacker bait for sure, just because of what the subject matter is going to be all about. But this one, you know, it's at least going to start with a smaller crowd. You know, maybe it develops a following. I hope it does. You know, you guys can help me with that. But, um, you know, I'm, I don't have the same level of expectation that it's going to have a, a, a hacker community. You know, this is not, this is not Fortnite, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, this is not PUBG. So I, I, I fear less than what those guys suffer through. Oh, that's humongous. Let's uh, find the, we'll go with the green button. Where's it? There he is. All right. Do a snap scale. Shrink him down a bit more like that. Like that. That should be pretty good. Make them a bit smaller, and drop them down here, like so. Yeah, that's pretty good. Create label child, and then this, of course, will be okay. Whoops, I always forget when I have cap locks on. Uh, I am using 2018 three one personal, but I am wishing I had a dark editor theme like yours. And that's uh, honestly that's another reason why, why I'm not going up to 2017 2018 because I have not pulled the trigger on the license. And so yeah, uh, you can change that somewhere. Um, can you? I think you could do that if you have at least the base. Uh, you know, like the indie. But I think. Yeah, the indie or the pro, before you can actually start mucking with the, the color scheme. I have a friend who did that. Oh, hey, maybe there's some little... Speaking of hacking, maybe there's some way to work around that. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, once I go up to the, the next one, I will actually uh, drop the cash on the, um, the indie version of the game. Uh, he is a streamer, actually. He did something just to change that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that's in the future. I'll definitely be dealing with that. Max Collider. So we do the play tween script, my usual. I wish I could do like an automated macro for this because I always do the same thing for these buttons every time. But I have to go through all this rigmarole like this and then say 0.15. That's my favorite for a button press. There you go, tween scale, and reset to beginning. And uh, anyone that's looking for the first time, I'm using Ingui. Uh, I've been using it for a, a ton of years now, so it's just my bread and butter. Uh, I know most people are probably using Yugui at this point. Um, I played with it, and it just 
Ironically, it's actually written by the same guy who did Ngui, at least in the beginning. But I just I found Ngui to be a little more uh, easier to control. So even though I started playing with Yugui, I reverted back. So there is an older version of uh, Volley Village that has Yugui stuff before I abandoned it and switched. Uh, please vote. Straw pull me. What is this? Oh, really? Oh, am I pronouncing it wrong? Oh, G-U-I? All right. So you have to say G-U-I and say, instead of saying gooey. All right, well, you know what? Sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm going gooey. Uh, there he goes, 68. <laughs> Woohoo! So there you go. I'm 68% there. It's a joke, by the way. <laughs> okay, well, uh, joke's on me. Yeah, that's right up there with the gif-jif the stuff. And I'm going to stick with gif. You know, in the same way that when someone finishes playing something, I don't say, hey, that was a great dream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, GIF, G-I-F, GIF, you know. Hey, you look great today. I mean, what? You know? No, no, you look great today. So that's that's my thing. All right. Now we gotta do a hide. Um, let me come back to my main menu. I'm gonna close everything else so I can just keep it nice and clean. And I'm gonna attach this so just so I can find it easier. What are, what are you doing? You ignored my control F, didn't you? I'm gonna throw this open public variable at the bottom so I can find it easy. And we'll say uh, credits menu. Oops. Got to call it a game object first, like so. Yes, he's happy. All right, so let's grab our main menu. Yep. Yep, anyone that wants to tell me I'm wrong, they're fine. I just tell them to Joe away. Just Joe. Jo Joe, Joe yourself out of this room. Joe. <laughs> wrong! <laughs> Oh, blow the stones coming in here to throw the gauntlet down. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, you're telling me is like my classic saying I love. You're entitled to your opinion, no matter how wrong you are. <laughs> All I hear is tell me if I'm tell me if I'm wrong, but wrong. <laughs> Thank you for the vindication of the wait. Thank you for the condemnation. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, check me if I'm wrong here, but you know, if we kill all the gophers, they're gonna lock us up and throw away the key. Gophers, you stupid idiot! There's my caddyshack for the day. That's the word. Yep, it is for me. Uh, credits group. Throw that puppy right down there. How you doing, man? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Oh, by the way, I gotta mention blow the stone, man. You guys, uh, we finally got the emos. Congrats. Uh, now I get to spam them in other people's chats. Fire away. Oh, I got to do that, too. I got. I forgot about that. I got to, like, take my little scary robot icon, right, and turn them into a uh, an emote, don't I? Look at that. Okay. Nice. Yeah. You want... Uh, <laughs> thump. Uh, yeah, toss me a link if you don't mind. Uh, so I can actually do the homework on that because I'm too lazy to Google it of how to create your own um, because you have to get affiliate status right which at this point um, based on actual twitch emotes okay gotcha oh cool oh interesting okay yeah I'd like to do that for my little robot guy at least so that's cool congrats man and I was gonna mention uh, you guys are so much better uh, at keeping your discord active and I'm so neglectful of that you know I'll, I'll check it and look and it's just like you guys are just like throwing stuff out hand over fist and I look at mine it's kind of like you know yours is like hopping right it's like Wall Street right? it's like uh, you know like tons of activity and you, you go to mine you click on mine and you, crickets man tumbleweeds going by <laughs> robot would be cool you definitely have affiliate yeah yeah and wasting it by not doing myself some customized uh Avatars. I'll have to change that for sure. So, yeah, thanks, man. 
Okay, so that's good. So then I need to actually create a function. Throw it down here in the bottom because why not? Um, public and I say public void toggle credits menu. Why did you put a space in there? There. Uh, you get three of them, so use them wisely. I sure did. <laughs> Choose wisely. <laughs> That's great. Okay. I'll think, I'll have to give it some thought then. I'll definitely do the robot, and then after that, I'll have to think it through. Um, okay, so, uh, credits menu. And let's go... If credits menu active self is active, then we want to shut him down. Set active false. Otherwise, and I know I could probably do that in one line with the if then, but I'm not that fancy. And to me, this is more legible anyways. Whenever I see the one line, it always just, to me, it gets like too convoluted to read. I'm just lazy. Too lazy to learn how to properly do it. Too old to begin the training. <laughs> there you go. Went from Caddyshack to Star Wars. Mm. Yeah, Luke's too old, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so then... Just need to set that up for toggling now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you go main menu, come back to me. What did you do? Come back. Here it is. Boop, boop. Main menu. And then we got to scroll way too many functions in this one menu. Yes, I know. Way too many. Uh, could do characters. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Volley Village characters. Just their heads. Uh, Bimli, obviously. <laughs> and maybe Sir Wand. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. I mean, of course, I would lean towards a Sir Wand because he's a total badass. <clears throat> nope, not icon press. Idiot, that's wrong. Main menu. Just clicked on the wrong stupid thing. Try this again. Toggle credits menu. There it is. Options menu. Oops. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, really? He's not attached? That's not good. There, now he is. <clears throat> uh, we all know Bimli could beat Sirwan any day of the week. Ooh, there you go. Sounds like a Thunderdome fight. Two middle -aged, two middle ages characters enter. One middle aged character, middle age, <laughs> middle ages character leaves. Hmm. I yeah maybe, but you know my money's on the dude with the magic wand. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so that's that guy. Yes, so turn him off. And then credits. <clears throat> Main menu. And he goes right here. And let's wire that up. Throw it down. Tell that to show credits. And then we should be... And my axe. <laughs> <clears throat> You don't get Twitch emotes? You mean you, you don't understand them or the purpose? Or you physically don't get them showing up? Oh, I just occasionally use. Yeah, I'm too lazy to sort of like go down on the menu and actually do that. Although I guess I should do that more. I'm just a bit of a Luddite on that kind of stuff. I know. All right. Let's see if I got that wired up correctly. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, the, the most I usually do is just the traditional. Here you go. Boom. There he goes. That's the extent of my uh, <laughs> of my emotes. Is basically sarcasm. Ah. All right, credits. There it is. Oh, I got that. I got to turn that off. But okay. Okay. Yeah, that's working okay. Um, I guess what I could do too is uh, options menu because it's getting like totally black there. So I'll temporarily turn option menus, set active, on and off to match it as well. I think that's the smoothest way to handle that. Like so. 
false. <clears throat> Laughing, obviously. Yeah. That one I get. That or he's just really tired. He's happy, but he's tired, so he's yawning. Uh, there's the only two I really use. I, I think that that's pretty much 95% of all the usage right there. Just those guys. <clears throat> Alright. So let me come back to this guy. And call him credits button. And we will turn that tween off so it doesn't play automatically. Uh, this is when it's time to go to bed. <laughs> That's funny. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, I just broke it, didn't I? Uh, if credit menu is active, false, true, else. Oh, crap. No, actually, that, that is a subset of options menus. That's not a choice, is it? Stupid. All right, so I guess what I could do is just take the credits background and make it less dark, make it a little more transparent so it doesn't get as black because that's just like pitch black, isn't it? So let's go like that. There he goes. That should be good enough. Okay. Try to get too slick there, and it doesn't work. <clears throat> uh, this is when a Sirwan challenges you to match his Orcus. <laughs> <clears throat> How is this on a website where they are sensitive to this kind of stuff? <laughs> These are like the ones I really use. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the waving. Yep. <clears throat> That's one of the cool things about actually doing the streaming is I just kind of go like this. I go old school. Analog. <laughs> Okay, credits. Yes. Uh, I think I want that a little darker now. Now that I see that. More like that. So that way, just make sure it's completely obvious that the credit or the options in the background are not selectable. So 125. Let me change that, and then I'll mark this pretty much done. Come back up here, and this goes to 125. Save, run. <clears throat> Wait, can you do that again? Uh, wait, you talking to me or do you have any subscriber emotes? Uh, do I? I have not done it yet. Um, I need to. I know I need to do that. Yes. Um, oh. You're, you're going to totally clip that, aren't you? I know you're going to just totally clip that. <sighs> I know I walked right into that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, thank you. Okay. Yes. All right. So, no, I don't. I do not have any subscriber emotes yet. I don't have any. Uh, I haven't done that at all. I know I need to. But uh, I'll get on that as well. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll, let me just... I'll delegate that to my staff. So hold, hold on for a second. Staff? St staff? Oh, crap. <sighs> I, I really need interns or something. I need... <laughs> uh, I, need I, get, I need a proper office before I even have a staff, right? No. Having a bunch of other people shoved in my, you know, office in here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I think his staff quit. <laughs> yeah. 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 One day. One day. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I mean, I have mixed feelings about that. I mean, I, the beauty of having a staff is the fact that you are going to get stuff done faster, right? But the downside is the fact that you get pulled off the box, right? You don't get to create the content. You're not nearly as hands-on, right? Once you start lifting yourself up higher. Uh, shove them all in your office like a real indie game studio. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm, you know, my room right now, I got the door closed and the lights on. So, I mean, it's a nice little comfortable 80 degrees, but then we're in the middle of winter. So, you can imagine, you know, mid-June... 
here in, in Vegas, right? Temperatures outside is like 120, and my office is pretty much matching it. My computer is screaming on high with the fans just working 400% in a desperate, pathetic attempt to try and keep the, the GPU cool. <laughs> and then poor people behind me just like sweating and dropping like flies, passing out. Yeah, that might be a hard sell. <laughs> um, oh, and then I was like talking about something else too, and I totally lost that. Um, oh, no, just, yeah, I was going to mention the fact that, yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, as I mentioned before, I've been doing animation for 20 years, but to be honest, I've only been lead, lead animator on a, a handful of jobs, and to be honest, I really don't care for it, man. I mean, you know, as soon as I, I started moving up to, to lead animator position, it was, I found myself not animating anymore, right? And that's not what I wanted to do. So that's kind of a weird kind of situation for me is the fact that I look forward to having other people help with the, the job, right? You know, and when I actually have enough money that I can bring people on and get the process done faster. But I'm also concerned that I, it's going to be much more of a managerial kind of thing, you know? And less on, I mean, like, this is me just, I mean, I mean, this is the definition of getting your hands dirty, right? You know, I'm doing pretty much what you see, you know? And, I mean, I'll definitely miss that, but the trade-off is, is it doesn't take me three years to do a stupid game, <laughs> you know? So, you know, there's pluses and minuses to all choices, right? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to double-check this one more time. I like that. Okay, I think that's dark enough without getting pitch black. Uh, character designs. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Do you think I need to separate this, or am I just overthinking this? I think. What do you think, guys? Is that legible enough? You know, that pretty much makes sense, right? Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, don't. Uh, don't sorry. Uh, your game ain't that stupid. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now I I can legitimately say that I have a um, a an actual credit screen, so <clears throat> I'll knock that one off the list finally. Um, and I'm gonna throw that down below because I know that works. And I guess I should check these other ones too. I had a parenthesis, a question mark beside them, <clears throat> so I could tell myself to check them to double check myself. But I think most of these are legit. Uh, an icon. Uh, Make coins and gems. Okay, this one uh, was pointed out before, too. Um, if you... Let's see. I can't remember who it was that came across this. Uh, you guys can let me know if it's one of you guys. But uh, when you ask for free coins, like this, right? It, but if you do it on... If you get a free coins on this screen, then your coin value right here automatically updates, right? But if you do it... Um, oh, no, I can check it here, can I? If you do it on one of these screens, it wasn't updating. So let's see if this 11738. Uh, so if we hit this, it did. Check it out. 11763. So that actually did work. That was you. Oh, cool. Well, check it out. I did add that code. And I just checked it. And you see that that number did update. So, um, and it was just a matter of, of um, 11763. And then this should be, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was only because I only had the text uh, value changing on the main menu screen because I didn't even think about that. Because when I when I created that the when I created this code for the button press, uh, at that point, literally, honestly, this was the only place where the coins appeared. You know, and since these guys came after the fact, it's not surprising that they were missing their updates. But that's knocked out. So I'm gonna take that from a question mark to a uh, yeah, it's done, done. So. Like so. Excuse me. Carbonation. And throw it back down here in my done done pile. Down here. Okay. In the main menu, add a combo check in once a minute. Oh yeah. So this is something that you guys may have noticed. It's it's kind of an obscure one, but it was something that was annoying me. <clears throat> Excuse me. The way combo works is you can set an arbitrary time where it will consider the person, if there's inactivity, it will consider them logged out, right? But the combo stuff, and that's the, the, the player data, by the way, right? The player data only gets updated on certain tasks, right? So if you're doing something, like if you're playing around on the main menu screen here, right? And, uh, come on. 
right? And you're just doing all this kind of stuff, and you're messing with the customize, right? And if you're playing with this kind of stuff and bouncing around and doing these kind of things, and it reaches that threshold of timeout, then the combo would boot you, right? So I went in, and I think this is right. I won't know until somebody actually causes the, the problem, but... Um, so in combo, I told it a two-minute timeout, right? And then I added a code that is in the game controller. So let me come back here. Game controller. And I threw it right down in the bottom. There he is. Combo check-in. So now all it does is uh, every minute it just does a uh, user update. Uh-oh, here comes the bomb. Boom! Nice! Look at that distance. That was good, man. That's some serious distance. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So then all it's doing here is uh, doing a player update. So it's retrieving the data off the server. But in reality, this is just my way of doing a ping. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't any kind of just ping thing. So this is the... the, the yeah, that was some serious error, man. That was nice. Um, so this way, it will actually uh, keep it active. So I'm hoping to avoid that. And then the way you know it is when you hit a button and it tells you you can't uh, you can't select or unlock villagers while you're offline. And the way you fix it is just by restarting a match or something like that. And then it gets its mind straight and it uh, reconnects. Uh, now it's too late. I will see you next stream. <laughs> Walk and talk to Stephen Hawkins. Well, man, thank you. I know you're like falling asleep. So thanks for uh, giving me a, a little extra time man, and stealing some of your sleep time. So, but yeah, man, thanks for coming by. And uh, yeah, come back again on uh, Wednesday. I'll be here. Uh, I'll try and wake you up again. <laughs> there you go. Walk and talk to Stephen Hawkins. See you Wednesday. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Thanks for coming around, man. <laughs> mm. Okay. So, yeah, I'm doing this check-in. And uh, later. Okay. So, because this is kind of hard to replicate because it didn't always seem to, like, trigger like you think it would... So I'm going to just kind of like optimistically say this is done until someone tells me otherwise. <clears throat> so I'm going to remove the question mark and call it done, even though the done might be in air quotes kind of done. <laughs> so uh, here we go again. Boosh. Whoa. Nice. Wow. That was like right in the middle, man. That was pretty. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So, kids are that good. Um, this is minor. Uh, this is just one when you do a, a rewarded ad. I want to make sure that it mutes the music and the, the menu stuff. But obviously, that's something I won't uh, be able to test unless I throw it on an Android. And I'm in PC mode right, right now, and I don't want to switch over to Android. So, I'll leave that as a question mark, although I think it's good. Uh, waiting for everyone to line up. <laughs> I'll stop distracting. <laughs> No, man, do it. Do it. Have some fun. You know, come on, chatting is half the fun of this stuff, right? Okay, so I will assume this is good, but I won't check that until I actually kick it off to, to Android, um, which I, I won't do now. I'm going to leave it in PC mode, so if I need to test anything locally, I can do that faster. <clears throat> when you accept a challenge game, customize menu didn't hide. Yeah, that was another one that was super obscure, but I don't know if you guys noticed it. And, um, that's one. Actually, I can check that right now, can I? I think I got that one fixed. And the way that actually comes around is, I'll see if I can replicate it right now. Let's go documents. So I'll fire up. Boom, another one. Jeez. Must have been something you ate, man. Look at that. Blowing up all over the place. <laughs> Oh, straight up. Look at that. That was nice. <clears throat> okay. So I'll bring this one up. All right. So what was happening was if you got a challenge, right? If a friend challenges you, <clears throat> excuse me, and you were on the main menu, then it it showed the, the versus menu correctly. But if you were like on a secondary menu, we'll just say arbitrarily like the icon menu, right? And let's see. So, you know what? Crap. I don't know if I have this one set up for um, online game friend. Nope. I got to add him. 
It's 12.45, I think, isn't it? 12.45, yeah, I'm correct. That's fun. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> uh, okay, so we're going to Customize Menu, and we'll go in the Icon Menu. And then we'll say, Add a Friend. Let's see. Guest 12.45. Add. <clears throat> Yes. Uh, let's see. It's the only reason I joined the stream. <laughs> Is he, you know, he just want to make stuff blow it up. It blowed up real good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to throw out a challenge. And then he gets it over here. So let's see if this cleans up correctly. We'll say accept. And crap. It didn't do it. It kind of did it. That's weird. It's still, look at that, it's still displayed. All right. Oh, crap. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so I'm loading the icons uh, dynamically, right, as prefabs. But when I once I bring them in, I'm not actually attaching them. So I need to, icon selection, I need to add that to my group of stuff that I, that I hide. Okay, that's good. So it did hide the menu, right, but not the prefab stuff that it loaded. So I gotta fix that. All right, I'll stop that one. And you get a free win. Uh, Villager icon selection clone. Oh crap, okay. Um, I guess I should parent it and then, then it would just be good. <clears throat> Jump into Twitch to join this channel, blow up some bombs, then 10 minutes later, I'm like, who's this Dustin guy? <laughs> it's like, yeah, can we, can we, like, here, can we move this down? Can we, you know what, I got it. Let's make it larger. Here you go. There. You happy now? Now it's less me and more of you. <laughs> there. <laughs> Ooh, that's so much better. Can you make that happen again? <laughs> okay. Uh, the perfect streaming experience. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I got to think this through. I have one of two options. I can either do a thing where I uh, dynamically hunt uh, this guy down and then um, turn him off. Uh, I actually shouldn't, shouldn't turn him off. I should just delete him, shouldn't I? Because I don't need him anymore. Um, although it's going to disappear once it reloads. Another one. Let's see if I can grab somebody. Oh, 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 I missed it. So, <laughs> wait, I can't grab them, can I? I think I saw you guys doing that before. So if I, can I actually, oh, I can. Look at that. I didn't know I could do that. Woo. <laughs> oh, all right, where's me? Uh, There he goes. There, there he goes. I'm just going to like, oops. There he goes. Incoming. Oh, yeah, that's going to hurt. <laughs> All right, now I'm getting totally distracted, aren't I? Uh, pin them to wall, too. Oh, really? How do you pin them to the wall? Is that like a right-click thing or something? Nope. Nope, that ain't it. You have to tell me how to do that. Hmm. Uh, top right of the menu. Oh, the pin. Got it. All right, so I hit that, and then I choose who I want to pin. So I'm just going to like... Oh. Apricot. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> How do I get rid of the pin? Can I get rid of the pin? Uh, let's see. To remove pin. A right click to remove pin. There it is. All right, I was aiming for myself and just... Oh, wow. I just pinned myself to the ground, didn't I? So I've been using this thing for weeks. Really? There he is. Okay. <laughs> there. There you go. I'm just stuck above you guys. I'll just let me linger there. Uh, you know what? Actually, I guess I can move me over a little bit. Like right there. There. 
<laughs> there. Okay. <clears throat> That'll teach me a lesson, right? You can also carpet bomb, too, if you select the bomb. Oh, really? Oh. It's on now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Smells like coating. <laughs> oh, that's just almost too much fun, isn't it? Wow. That's good. I like that. All right. <laughs> One five. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> it's too distracting. No, no, I'm totally focused. <laughs> Did you get a lot done today? Yeah, man, I blew up at least 40 people. <laughs> no, the game. Oh, crap. Yeah, I forgot about that. I was supposed to be working on the game, right? <clears throat> All right, so as I was saying... So my choices are to either hunt it down or parent it, uh, get the more important stuff out of the way. I think the better thing to do would actually just to be parent it to that menu, um, <clears throat> and that way it'll hide itself because the menu gets hidden. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy. Excuse me. All right, so we're good there. And then find the instantiate. And this is icon selection menu. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. So then all I, in theory, all I have to do is uh, say, if I can type correctly, icon. Yeah, that was, that was my keyboard there. That was not me. Icon menu transform parent is equal to us. Game. No, not game controller, jerk. Game object, transform. Boom. All right, so now I'm parenting all those uh, icon buttons to that menu, and the menu gets hidden, so those icons should go away. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, took another stab at this, and I'll probably have to do the same with the other windows, but that should be all I need. And I got all those different menus, so I got to test all of them to make sure that they, they get hidden completely. Um, oh, no. Excuse me. I want to be... Okay. Wow! That broke. Check that out. Interesting. Okay, so... <clears throat> when I do a parent on that... Okay. So I gotta do parent on them, but I gotta also make sure that I scale it because that scale just went nuts, didn't it? Okay. So let me. That was kind of cool looking, actually. So I do icon transform, local. No, not local. Local scale is equal to vector three, one. There. That should fix that. <clears throat> I did? Yes, I did. Oh, it's still cooking. Okay. Customize icon. Perfect. All right. So let's try this again. Here we go. Online game challenge. Challenge. He's been challenged and he's accepting. Fingers crossed. Perfect. Okay. So that one's good. One down. A few more to go. <clears throat> all right, so we I probably need to do the same for all these guys. Um, because each one of these menus is getting something loaded dynamically, and I haven't really bothered doing any parenting because I didn't think about the fact that the menu could be, like, shut down, right, instantly. So, oop, I'm way out in orbit here. Okay. Boom. Select like villagers. Oh, interesting. Wait. Is he actually... Oh, I, I guess this one I actually did do a parent constraint on him. Villager selection. Oh, good. Okay. I was actually smarter on this one. So, he should be good to go. How about 
launcher. Yeah, he as well. Launcher selection, good. And then editor. That's, you know what? I don't even know if I had that set up properly. So let's find out if editor behaves when he gets a challenge. Online game, challenge friend. Challenge, okay. Here we go, let's see. Nope, not so much. Yeah, customize layout. Okay, so that needs to go away as well. All right, and he should still be existence. Yes, okay. <clears throat> so customize layout, and that would be under accept. Let's see. Oh, show, I know what that is. That would, did I just butcher it? No, I didn't. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, okay, he's still good. Okay, so now it's under the show the versus menu, which I don't think is here. I think it's under main menu. Show versus menu. This is where I hide like everything. Customize layout, set active and then of course he has no idea what that is but someone has to know so let's f figure out who knows him uh, game controller how about that oh crap really nobody actually has customized layout in their scripts okay I guess we got a new one to add then uh, no, that, no, someone has to have that. Let's see. Uh, level, current level, custom level content. Wow. Really? I call it custom level content. That's, that's some beautiful name stuff going on there. Custom level content. Oh. Okay, maybe it's not even a game object. Like I thought it was. Set active. Okay, wait. Oh, because I can't spell. A-C-T-I-V-E. And now we're good. Okay. So that should make the level editor work correctly. We'll double check that right now. <clears throat> I mean, this doesn't break the game. I mean, you know, it, it still starts the game correctly, but you know, it's you know, it looks like it, it looks like a glitch. I, mean, it, I guess because it is. Uh, so I definitely want to get this knocked out. Make sure there's nothing that overlays when it's trying to show the uh, the versus menu. So I say challenge again. Except, oh crap, I forgot. That was a waste of time, wasn't it? I forgot to actually be in the editor. <laughs> All right, take two. I'm gonna edit that one out. Try this again. Editor, that's where we wanna be. All right. Second guy comes in, throws up a challenge. Online game. Challenge. Him. Challenge. Here comes the challenge. Accept. All right. Let's see if everything goes away now. It does. Good. Okay, so that one's fixed now, too. All right. I'll let you get the victory here. How long is it going to take? 10 seconds before it registers? The other guy's already gone. It's interesting. Sometimes it does it like instantly. Sometimes it takes the full 10 seconds to note it. Yep. 
And then this I fixed, it was destruction bonus and then the uh, launcher bonus. If you use a launcher besides the catapult, you get like bonus points. But it was doing a uh, doing it incorrectly where even if you use the catapult, it was giving you launcher bonuses, which was wrong. But that's fixed as well. That's on my list. Okay, so he's good. So who else? So we have... Um, I'll check these, but I think these are all going to hide correctly anyways. But let's check just to make sure. All right, while well, that's loading up, film a drink up here again. Don't explode. Don't explode. Hey. All right. Let's see, online game. Challenge. Challenge. Go. And he gets the challenge. Accept. All right. And perfect. Look at that. Nice and clean. All right. So that's another one where the menu is getting hid properly. All right. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident about this one now. All right. Kill that one. Oh, did you see this? You see all these in, uh, index out of range? There's the... Oh, look at that. That is the Amazon AWS error. That's biting me right there. So what this is happening here is this is what I was talking about before, right? Where sometimes one of the games ends up being like a second offset, right? And because my game works exclusively off of the server timer, if it's, you know, like one second different, right? And this one's telling it, right, the cannonball is in position one second of the future, right? Or in this case, yeah, in the future, that means like it, the frames would be negative. So when it's trying to like animate the cannonball, it's like negative 30 to begin with, right? And that's when I get these error messages because there's no negative uh, animation frames. Oh man, so I'm definitely gonna uh, switch to my own server, um, at least to begin with. Uh, that's on my to-do list obviously but I mean I I won't do that during the stream but the next time this rolls around you may see me uh, with a new version that will be pointing to my home computer versus AWS since AWS is completely broken in this area and I got no idea how to deal with it aside from just telling them to go away that sucks man you think you think Amazon would actually have their act together on that but no I guess they, the way they look at it is it's a virtual server. So, you know, if the, the server time on all devices shows up within one second, we consider it to be perfect, you know, which to me is crap. But, you know, oh, well, but that is a textbook example of it going wrong. OK, so let me fire this back up yet again. All right. And I guess the last one to check, let's see. I can't remember, did I just check Launcher or Villager? I don't even remember which one I was looking at. I think it was Villagers. So I'm going to try Launchers. And if this goes, I'll just consider it to be Golden. Challenge. Accept. And perfect. Nice. All right, so he's good. All right, so are there any other menus that I have to worry about? I don't think I do. Unless the options menu? I'll do options and credits. How about that? So just both those guys are popped up. I think they're on a submenu of the main menu, so in theory, they should go away. But we'll find out here. Challenge, go, and, oh, nope, busted, <laughs> just got back, what did I miss, uh, just doing some cleanup at this point, I'm just trying to make it when you do a, a challenge match, when one person challenges the other, um, I was having a situation where it goes to the little versus screen, where you see the two, uh, you know, the two villagers taunting each other, um, some of the menus weren't actually getting hidden, so they were overlaying on top of it, and I was fixing that, and I got most of them done, 
but uh, except for let's see options can't remember if this is a sub menu or not let's go here if options menu yeah okay I just got to turn off the options menu set active false um, and for the record I did actually try grouping all these guys into uh, a little subset and it just sort of broke something else so I just thought it was easier just to leave this giant list and make sure they all get turned off um, in theory they're all off anyways you know and it's just a one-time event uh, and it only happens when you get challenged by someone and you accept the challenge okay okay and uh, oh how about the get free coins does that oh crap let me restart I made a code change and that always pisses unity off okay so that's saved all right let's check this one out how about this one they get free coins I think that should be everybody though oh no I guess the uh, info menu so I guess there's a couple more to check here challenge here yes challenge accept okay does it go away it does good okay so that one's golden nothing to fix there okay and uh, player info actually I can look here um, select excuse me I could just do uh, Oh, that's not me. You see all those P's there? My keyboard wigs out sometimes. Player info menu. Set active to false. So that takes care of that guy, that buddy right there. And that is, yeah, that's the only instance of that there. All right. Um, and the buy coins menu. Uh, let's see. Throw that, throw that in here as well. So, by coins menu, set active, false, and by gems menu, set active, false. There, that should be everyone. That's the all the menus that you could possibly be on. <clears throat> excuse me, when you get uh, a challenge sent to you and you you accept it um, except maybe tutorial but then I don't know that would be wacky let me see so here's the tutorial so what happens if we actually get a challenge in the middle of the tutorial which in theory should never happen because if you, you're gonna do do the tutorial once but this might be interesting um, All right, tap here to continue. So we go uh, online game challenge. So what do you think? What's going to happen here? Say challenge. Oh, interesting. All right, so in the, if you're in the middle of the tutorial, you never even receive the challenge, which I'm okay with because I'm thinking if you're actually running the tutorial, the last thing you need is somebody to be challenging you. So <laughs> the fact that... I'll cancel that. The fact that you're not actually receiving the challenge mes message while you're in the middle of a tutorial, I'm actually okay with that. That actually works for me. Say so quit, and then we come back to the main menu. <clears throat> All right, tutorial customize. Um, yeah, I think that is everyone. We just did the get more gems. We know it was covered, that was covered. And then that one we addressed as well. So yeah, I think that's it. So we come back to not him, but my actual to-do list. Uh, there. So I'm gonna take that question mark away because we just did a check on that. So accepting a challenge game, customized menu, didn't hide, check others as well. We checked, we came, we conquered. So he is done. 
throw him down here. <clears throat> okay, what else we got to deal with? Uh, once again, I'll check that later. Uh, I'll do that when I'm actually doing, when I'm in Android mode. Uh, let's see, it will work if, it will work if, me good English, that's really nice. It will work if set number to four, destroy one building and hit stop. Um, oh, that was one that, I think it was Hawk that found that one. Um, <clears throat> and that one I did actually fix. Um, and return. I think I actually did that one when I was still broadcasting on um, on Friday, right? Stuck at base. Yeah. So that one I'm going to mark done because I know that one for a fact is knocked out. Um, I think I even demonstrated that one on Friday. So I feel very comfortable throwing this one in the done category. Done, done. <clears throat> Make sure clouds cover all corners of buildings and villagers. A couple of people have mentioned that, that they've seen through. And I did that this morning. Um, I'll show you both in one player and two player mode. Um, I'll throw a couple of buildings on key points that would normally get exposed. So we'll go customize, we'll edit the layout. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. That's up there. So I'll come back here and do two player game. Um, oh, I have to wait for power up. You know what? I'm going to change that. I'm going to change the power up to always be. The uh, fog bank. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait for next power up. That's what I wanted. Let's go to there. Why? Oh, okay. My GPU fan is like screaming like it's about to take off. Uh, I was always wondering if you could change your town layout. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yep with the editor and ultimately uh, entirely different island themes that'll come post release but if the game has any level of success I'm gonna take the money and reinvest it into creating entirely different island motifs for you guys so there will be like whole new set of icons new villagers new launchers you know with like you know themes like ninja right uh, like military alien 8-bit world right those are the the goals for different island themes so, but <clears throat> that's definitely post-release. Uh, so, so wait for new power up and then delete me. Okay. Oh, I still have it set up, don't I? Good fog. That's what I wanted. Well, <laughs> I definitely need to knock that out later on. I can't leave that in there. So yeah, what I did is hard code it. So the power up always gives me a fog bank so I can test that. And let me blow this up full screen. And we'll start with the red. Just while I'm waiting, I'll just be a jerk. There. <laughs> okay. So now let's see if everything is getting covered. Actually, that was kind of stupid because I want to test the blue. There. All right. So you can see pretty much everything. Oh, and there's like a little hint in there, but I don't mind that. I think that's okay. But the, the key factor is just there's no building sticking out on the tops or the bottoms. That's what I was more concerned about. All right. I sh like an idiot, I hit the bottom building down here, right, when I need that to be, <laughs> you know, actually displayed because that's the, one of the things I'm checking. <laughs> so I'm goofing off and just making giving myself more work. But there. All right. Now I have one shot already loaded so I can still fire. And one's all I need. There he goes. Yeah, beautiful. So, and there's like that little dot right there. But I don't care about that. That I think that works well. Uh, we definitely need to make cameos in each other's games. If you can get to the point where you can add themes and characters like that, I'm all for it, man. Sure. The only downside for me is that creating a new island theme is a, each island is like a two-month endeavor, right? Uh from the creating the art and the animation and uh, integrating and wiring it all up, it, it takes me upwards of two months, you know, which is why there's only one island theme currently. That's exactly why. Okay, so that looks golden. That's good. Um, so we'll come back here, and then I'll fire up a one-player game, and I will let the bot score a fog bank. 
so we can check it. Now you can see I got, that's why I put the buildings here and here, so it really sticks out. You know, that's kind of the worst case scenario. Just waiting. Jerk. All right, send my guys out. Just have something else to do. You know, actually, I guess I shouldn't have knocked the buildings down because that means he's sending out villagers to repair buildings, which means he's taking twice as long to fire. <laughs> so, once again, there it goes. All right, so let's look. Uh, so we have a little bit of the shadow kind of peeking out over here. Um, I'm kind of okay with that. I mean, I, I guess worst case is I could throw another uh, fog bank on the side here. But, I mean, that's the only thing that's really showing. Before, you just you saw chunks of buildings that were uh, visible other places you know I mean so you see how far that shadow reaches out right so if I had had like the small building down here you that never would have like reached that far so I'm actually okay with that I think that one's not too much of an issue uh, so that's the blue um, oh crap um, in terms of my player side it may not cover but it doesn't really matter because this is, you know, the when you see the clouds on your side, that's more of just for your own aesthetic that you know that you actually have a fog bank going, you know, because that's not what the opponent sees. And it's semi-transparent, right? So if buildings stick out on your side, it doesn't matter. Who cares? I mean, I'm sure somebody will at some point will say that, you know, my building's sticking out. And it's kind of like, yeah, who's seeing it, you know? Uh, all that matters is what the other person is truly seeing on your side. Oh, come on. I cannot suck at my own game. Got it that time. There he goes. Yeah. So, I mean, like, here you can see the, the building sticking up a little bit, and here it's sticking up, but who cares? This is more or less just to let you know. It's semi-transparent. It's just to let you know that you have the fog power-up running. <clears throat> Client-side stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So, I consider that looking good and then the other thing I'll check is let's reverse that so if I'm the blue player and I want to check the the red so what I'll do is uh, fire this up again and this one this is gonna look weird because so this one will have a power-up that pop up and it won't necessarily be the same power-up because remember how I hard-coded it in the code on this side so it's gonna look really broken um, yeah, I'll do it this way. Because this one could get, like, the stop sign, and then this one is doing the fog bank. Wait, is it off again? Let's see. Nope, it's in sync. Perfect sync. Ready, aim, fire. All right. So this would be kind of humorous, because we're going to see... Uh, yeah, so he has a stop sign, right? And he has a... a a cloud bank because if you remember I hard coded this side to ignore what the proper thing is right and just show the cloud bank so um, that's why it's inaccurate so this one he's gonna get fog bank but he's actually gonna put the characters to sleep so this hopefully this never happens in the game but this would be like god-awful bad because it would totally break the way the game is playing of course it doesn't matter if I can't hit the power up anyways there it goes all right so but this is what we want to look at so here's the red, and you can see he's completely covered as well, right? There's nothing to find in here, right? So that was the objective, just to make sure that the clouds are completely obscuring all your buildings, right, that you're not vulnerable at all. And I would consider that a total win. So since we're good with that, I'm going to go ahead and take this hard-coded out. So if I don't do it now, I'll forget, and that would be really bad. But... We can mark that when it is done as well. So let me come back to my to-do list. So, yes, clouds now truly cover all buildings and villagers. And once again, that, that came up in case you guys missed it before, just because I was still doing all kinds of tweaks to the camera in terms of rotation, position, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then when I, once I moved the camera around, I wasn't going back and repositioning all the, the, the clouds and that's why stuff was kind of peeking through. But now the camera is totally done and locked. The camera is not going to move again. So now that I know I made that change, it'll definitely stay the same from now on. 
<clears throat> win percentage isn't adding to games played. Okay, now um, that one I found, and I haven't checked it yet, but this is so stupid. So uh, add, let's see, add winning, uh, no, uh, winner, let's see, what was it? Winner of two player else here. Uh, where was it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I have this. Uh, I had update winner stats and update loser stats. So, I had this beautiful function set up to update all that information. But for whatever reason, I didn't actually ever kick it off. I was just doing a couple of arbitrary values here. So, it was redundant code and it was incomplete. So, now that I have this uh, posted here, um, now it should update everything correctly. So. I can do a quick check here. So the numbers are still going to be totally screwed up for you guys. Anyone that's playing the game now, especially if you lose a match, it won't record um, that as a match. So game as a game's played. Um, so the game's played uh, was coming off completely wrong, right? It was showing it like, so you could lose 10 games in a row, right? Like 10 out of 10 and you, games played would be like zero <laughs> because it just never uh, accumulated. But that should be correct now. So, and this only comes from uh, online. I believe I only do this for online games. Um, let me double check. 70. Yeah. All right. So I do an online game and then I'll bail out of it. And that 70 should go up to 71, I hope. I just added the code this morning and had not checked it yet. All right, so I'll just quit out of this. Oh, you know what? I didn't think about that. Quit might, yeah, the quit actually, the game's played is only getting added at the end after it's over. So I gotta do that right at the beginning, don't I? Um, crap. Okay, I didn't even think about that. So let me play through a game and see if it does iterate up. And if so, then I know that code works on the end, but I need to bump that games played to when the game starts. So let's go online game and I'll just try and beat the, beat the AI as fast as possible. Now he's a level 41 because I'm level 45, which I just arbitrarily set. So this AI is going to play uh, a lot better than some of the other ones. You know, if you guys are playing right now and you're playing like level one to six, the AI is going to miss a lot more just to keep it uh, more fair. But now he's being a jerk. Oh, and I missed that one. Crap. Do not get that. Do not get that. Got it. Okay. Nice. All right. He's doomed now. I got him. Game's over. He just doesn't know it yet. Done. All right. Think I can finish him off before those guys rebuild that building? It's going to be close, but I think I have it. Yep, he's done. Game over. Good. All right, I'll let it finish. Say, uh, disrespect. I'm going to be a jerk. <clears throat> That's all good. Let's come back. All right. Fingers crossed that it says 71. It says 71. Good. All right. Now that we know it works, we need to break it. <laughs> I, I need to make sure that the uh, games played comes up at the very beginning. And I have to deduct the coins. So I, I do a, a combo update. 104%. <laughs> that's that's going to be like, that's going to live with me, isn't it? That's, that's just going to stick, right? <laughs> Which is funny because the irony is the fact that the 104 was actually correct because um, because the games played were not iterating, right? So the games won was literally more than the games played. So the 100 104 value was correct, right? And then I fixed it. I flopped it because I thought the math was wrong here. And I that's the version I sent out. So anyone that plays the game now, the win percentage is broken, right? So the irony is the fact that this was right. But now it's broken uh, for you guys. But the update will actually fix that once I kick out a new version. 
Uh, uh, you wish it stuck. Now you got all those new players challenging you. <laughs> yep. And, I mean, you know, as much as I play the game, I still miss, too, you know. So I don't know if that's a testament to the game remains challenging. Even if you're, like, a seasoned player, you still miss sometimes. Or if it's just a testament to the fact that I suck, <laughs> you know. Or is it C, all the above? I don't know which. But um, hopefully it's just A. Hopefully it's mostly A. So, you know, no one can just completely win perfectly every game, right? But uh, I'll let you guys figure that out for yourselves. Okay, so update loser stats. Let me go to him. All right. Um, so I'm going to mark that out because we're going to actually do that in the beginning. Update winner stats. Games played. We knocked that one out because, like I said, we're going to do that in the beginning. So... Um, Coins. Okay, I gotta figure out. Uh, sure feels like A so far. <laughs> good, good. Okay. I, I I like to think that I don't suck at my own game. All right, so now I gotta dig out where I actually deduct the coins in the start of a match. Um, I actually may do it right there. Uh, let's see. Start online game. Yeah, there it is. Boom, right there. Good. So, games played. Oh, wait, I'm doing it there? Hmm. Okay, you know what? I may have to add... Um, okay, I think what may, may be happening is that this code doesn't get kicked off when you're playing a bot, which right now is... 99% of the time anyways so uh, so we say start uh, local no select local oh come on I forget I got that selected uh, select local game if online is simulated here's where we toss that right here there so there's two places there's an actual online match and there's an online match where you're playing the bot so, uh, wait, where are you? Okay, do that again and just toss this like so. Okay, good. So now, it doesn't matter if we play against a bot or if we're playing against a human opponent, um, which is funny. I guess, actually, that was a bug, too, anyways. The way I had it before is it, it was iterating games played, right? Total games played. It If you're playing a, a regular match against a human, it would actually iterate that twice, right? When the game started and then when the game finished. So that's just as well that I'm getting that knocked out so let's go here here hawk what's up buddy so um just plowing through everything uh just trying to get everything up and running and working nicely uh okay so iterated up so now if i quit right now i should still see that as a 72 how's it going hawk uh so let's see and it's 72 boom done that's working perfectly so tons of stuff um, uh, nice GUI. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, can't take credit for that. Actually, the GUI I did purchase. Um, that one, I'm not a big fan of doing GUI stuff, so I did buy the buttons. But thank you, uh, uh, Trainzen. How's it going, man? Welcome. Uh, so check this out, guys. I do have a credits page. Check this. Now we actually have technical support added, right? As I said I was going to do. So that's there. Um... Haven't said specifically who, who that individual is, but so when I capitalize the I to a capital I, it kind of looks the same as the L, but I hope that's okay. So anyways, uh, there's my literal credit page. That's the whole kitten caboodle right there. I just bury myself right in the middle. So <laughs> there you go, guys. So that's 
done and done. Um, let's see. Oh, let's. Okay, so that's good. Hey, <laughs> Hawk likes it. I got a thumbs up for Hawk. Good. That's important. Um, all right. So, and what I was doing was, as I mentioned, I burned through a bunch of my to-do items, and I've been checking them. So, I mean, as those have been hanging with me, know that uh, these are all the ones that I had done and updated. So now these guys, I'm just checking to make sure win percentage isn't adding to... Okay, we just checked that one out, and we have that one working now. So I'll take away that question mark, because he is truly done. And I'll move this down here. There. Uh, being given a launcher bonus code, even though I'm using the base launcher. Uh, yeah, and I fixed that one, too. Um, I can show you what I was talking about on that one. Real quick. Um... Because I do have everyone unlocked here, I think. Yes. So, remember this. This is the incentive for actually purchasing the launchers. Because the launchers don't change the gameplay. But I give you bonus coins if you invest in one of these guys, right? If you spend the gems to buy one of these guys, I'll throw you more, more coins, right? So, if I have him selected, and I'll come back here and do another quick online match. And I'll just spank the AI pretty quick here. So, and then the icons are all working now. So, this is kind of cool. It shows their personalized icon character now. So, that's dialed in and working. I don't remember if I had that done on Friday or if I finished that up over the weekend. I can't remember. But, if I didn't, that works now. Alright, he's going to go for that cloud bank. And as long as I knock out these little guys, I don't care if he does because I know basically where the buildings are so I can still try and oh clouds you notice the clouds are actually covering buildings much better all right so now I'm guessing and I still hit and then I'll do this one since I can actually see the bar boom I can reset his work there I thought about hiding the bar but I kind of like that to me the bar visible is kind of liability you know but uh, there here we go and it is game over boom all right so, in this case, I'm using, uh, I'll be polite. So, we're using the uh, the dragon catapult, so I should get a bo bonus, and there it is. Okay, so I'm getting the bonus. I didn't really destroy anything in terms of the, the corn, the wheat, or the hay, so I got no destruction bonus, but I did get a launcher bonus, uh, 25. So, if we go uh, 7 divided by 25 equals, yeah, uh, 28%? I guess that's right. Um, oh, I guess it rounded down. Okay, um, it should be 30%, but I think if it was like 8 divided by 25 equals 32. Yeah, so it's right in the middle, so it either goes up to 7, or down to 7, or up to 8. So it's 28 versus 32, but, you know, it's close enough. Uh, I think once it's a larger betting number, that'll be like easier for it to match anyways. So you get a 30% 30 30 bonus because you use that launcher. Now the thing that was going wrong before was that I was getting credit even though I was using the base launcher. So let's come back in here. Base launcher. Great. So now there should be no bonus, right? And when we were doing this on Friday, it was still giving me extra points, which is totally wrong. Wow, when I got this full screen, man, it just blows up the blue right in my face, doesn't it? I look like I'm uh, in the Willy Wonka movie, Oompa Loompa. Like I ate one of those candies. Oh, I missed. Okay. Alright, let me try and burn through this quickly. Alright. That's a lot of fog banks. Is it just random luck, or did I forget to fix that? Turn that back off. I think I fixed it. Yep. 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 So even though he throws a cloud bank up, I still know where they all are. Look at that. Still took him out. Uh-oh. I missed that one, I think. Oh, yeah. There he goes. There. Clouds do nothing to me. I'm going to be disrespectful because I destroyed him even with the fog bank going. And destruction bonus. There it is. Cool. So because I used the launcher, I get no uh, launcher bonus because I just used the default catapult. And this came up correct. So that one is fixed as well.
So let me bring this bad boy up. Uh, being given a launcher bonus coins even though I'm using the base launcher. That is fixed. Sweet. Burning through these guys. What do you say? All right. Throw that down there. And then this one, like I said, I'm in PC mode on Unity right now. So I don't know if it's worth checking. Uh, because I got to just do it physically on the Android. And that's not anything I can even really show on here. So I'll check that later. And all that is is when you uh, watch a, uh, a rewarded video, the, the game music and audio were playing on top of it. So I just had to make sure it's muted. And I think that works, but I haven't tested it yet. But, um, all right, so 3 o'clock. Actually, I'm going to do a quick restroom break, guys. So if you just hang tight, I'm going to go do my business, and I'll be right back in just a moment. All right? In the meantime, actually, you know what? Here, just to keep you guys preoccupied, then just like, there you go. You guys can chew on some bombs. <laughs> all right, I'll be right <laughs> All right, that's a good way to know that return right there, right? I'll leave and return with a giant wave of carpet bombing. <laughs> there you go. One more. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> All right, so let's see what we got going on now. So yeah, that takes care of double checking all the stuff I'd done over the weekend. And that looks like it's all dialed in pretty nicely. So mm. oh, this is something I definitely wanted to add from a while back. Uh, because right now, when you uh, level up, um, uh, let's see, sorry, doing one quick check here. Uh, there's, wow. Uh, there's, hmm. All right. Sorry. Just got a text from the, the wife. Had to check on that. So. <clears throat> oh, nice. Launch them. Um, so, yeah, because right now, uh, when you version up, right, when you hit a new level, um, the only way you really know it is if you go manually check yourself here, right? So I'm level 45. I still got to win. Wow. Still got to win a ton more villagers. So when you get up this level, you got to want a ton of guys to actually level up. So, um, <clears throat> but the only way right now, you know, you know, when you get a new level is if you actually do it here. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walk in the park. Um, so I want to change that. I want to make it so when you do level up, 
which means that I'm going to drop myself back down. Um, so, I'm going to go cheat here. Come back over here for a sec. Alright. Let's see. Um, client users. Let's guess 1245. Search. That's kind of cool. It actually, that when it's green, shows that I'm actually online at that moment. Okay. So, what I want to do is take my level setting. The game's played. Uh, gems, level. Now I'm going to just drop me down to two. Um, or maybe even one. Just so it'll go fast. There. So. <clears throat> Alright. So, what I need to do is, uh, when I want to do a game over. Is look for villagers. Add new villagers. All right. And then let's see. We do that. And then here's where we determine the level. Okay. So bingo. This is what I want right here. So if this happens, then we need to let the player know that he just reached a new level, and that'll be in the game over menu so let's take mr. main menu here and hide him for a little while gameplay menu fire him up uh, no actually you know what sorry take it back it's a game over menu that's what we want no <laughs> wrong again uh, game over online that's what we want because that's to be the only place you'd actually uh, get uh, Extra villagers is when you play online games. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So we'll do as a you one. Um. Oh, winning menu. All right, and then let's see, and that is. Oh yeah, for the unlock card. Good. Actually, I'll use that as a reference. Um, call this level up menu. And we'll throw it on the opposite side. Ah. Unlock. Now we'll throw it on the opposite side. And we'll lock that back again. We want that to be left, left, bottom, bottom. Oh, you jerk. That's weird. Why is it offsetting like that? 435.95. Okay. Good. So now we got a little position here, and this is where I have the... Uh, the level up menu pop up. Actually, I guess I could do it hard coded because I'm not showing any icons. So, but I've already got this, so that's actually not a bad thing to have. So, level up menu. Create sprite child. Like that. Alright, and I think we'll go with green. And we'll have to play with the play with the size here in a second. Uh, uh, let's see, create label child. What do I want to say here? Two forty two. That's good. Okay. To level up, and let's see. What do you think? Green, like that. All right, and then this one. Actually, I think I'll do as a title. So I'm gonna make this one by himself and just scale him up. So it just screams. 
Okay, and then we'll do one below with the text smaller. Create label child. And then make that uh, 50. That should be good. Okay. And we'll say. Congrats, you just leveled up. And I'm gonna squish this. I hate the kerning on this, the, the spacing. To me, that's just too extreme. All right, I'll push that at the top, like so. Because I also wanna like tell the person they also won 10 gems, so I gotta add that as well. Level up, and then One more here. Copy paste. We'll say new level. And then I'll just change that dynamically. And then 10 bonus gems. Oops. Pen, 10, pen, 10 bonus gems. Uh, hmm. Okay. Let me go lowercase. 10. Ah. 10 bonus gems. Oh, how about plus 10 bonus gems? All right, maybe go a little wider on this. Make this go a bit bigger, 70, 80. Okay, congrats, you just leveled up. I guess this should be larger. Since that's the main focus, 60. And get the spacing right here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Here's what I'd do. I'm going to take this out. New level. Make this be by himself like this. And then create. Oops. Create Sprite Child. Jeez. I wish it had actually remembered like the last one it did. Um, I'll do that one. Shrink it down. Shrink it down. Do it like that. Yeah. Get that position a bit. All right. And I should make it wider. Oops. Let me go wider to accommodate when someone gets like a super big level. No. So, for example, let's see. We'll go create sprite. Oh, label child. Nine, nine. Yeah, so I want to make sure they have enough space for that. So, oops. Oh, come on, you jerk. I'm trying to select it. Thank you. Like that. Give him a little more room. Like that. And then 
set that to there. Um, I guess the size is okay there. Let me turn off that. And then... Actually, I'm going to have to unparent that because I'm going to change the color on this guy. And that's going to affect his color. So let me go like that. There it goes. What do you guys think? Oh, I want to add the, the gem. Great sprite child. And let's dig out the gem here. Snap. Oops. Okay, I think we're getting close here. Maybe scooch this over just a touch. Um, you know what? The more I think about it, the more this is kind of redundant. Uh, I would spell out congratulations. Um. Yeah, I think this is like too much text. So I'm going to actually kill this. And I uh, uh I agree Hawk. Uh congrats you. I say congrats because I can't spell congratulations. I'm kidding. Kind of. I think I spelled that correctly. And I'm going to take out the just. That's kind of obvious. You leveled up. <laughs> you can relate. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Some of you guys around here, English isn't necessarily your, your native tongue. So I have no excuse. Except for the fact that I was educated in the Deep South. That's my story. Alright, I can scale this up to 60 maybe. Congratulations, you leveled up. Uh, I don't like the spacing on this one now, so. <clears throat> Give myself some more room, like so. Alright, now, maybe if I can get congratulations all cap. I'll be happy. Nope. Not without dropping his font size. Okay, so... Let's go bigger. You could just do level up. I guess so. Am I overthinking it? I, that happened before too with one of the other windows. I was throwing way too much info in there. And by the time I was done, it just like peeled back to almost nothing. Okay, now that one definitely needs to be big. But I have the room for it, so that's totally fine. Yes, 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 yes. Now we're cooking. Four, four. And then grab this guy. There we go. Should I put down here? Ugh, I hate, man. I, I just absolutely hate GUI design. Uh, I'll see either do a one or two explanation points. Oh, I did four, didn't I? Uh, I like three. Um, oh, you did say three. Yeah. Yeah, I, I normally do three. Okay. I think it's just a little space there. three and I can tweak this just a little bit come in just a little like that and I think we're good and I'll change this to level up number so I can f get that level up ah uh, level up value that's good 
Um, oh, you know what? Actually, I should, because I want to do a scale up, so I should actually center everybody. So let me just grab everyone. And then, let's see, it's not quite centered. Do it like that. It's close. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, so then when we do like a little scaling action, whoops. It scales from the center, boom, 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 like that. Good. And then we'll turn him, let's see. Really? Wait, why is it, uh, ooh. Is this thing scaled? No. That's bizarre. All right, I'm gonna take all these guys off for a second because I have a weird scale value on him. Bring it back. Good. Now it's one. Cool. Okay. And where's my unlock car position? Actually, I guess I should have it because the unlock car position pops up right here. So I guess this guy should be pretty much in line with that. Yeah. That should be close enough. Okay. And, okay, that's looking a little yellow. Let me go a little... Something like that. There it goes. I just want to make it a little greener so it matches the background a little bit better. It was just pushing in the yellow just a little bit. Level up value. Okay, now let's get this attached and try to implement it. Just throw it at the bottom. Why not? Crap is everywhere in this stupid thing. Um, I need this to be a UI label because we're just going to change the text value. Um, Level up value. I think that's what I called it. Yes, yes. Um, add villager. Oops, man, that's not what I called it. Uh, let's see. I lost my place before. It's I thought it was add villagers. Um, that's good. Uh, can you do animation of ten purple gems flying towards the top right corner? Uh, I could. Um, I could, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I, I do that at most of my games. Uh, that might be something that I'll think about doing like post-release, you know, or, you know, further down the, the to-do list, if I get closer release and I, I have nothing else to do, I think to me, that's much more of an icing on the, on the cake kind of concept. Um, not a, not a bad idea at all, but I, having it like fly up and go into it, boom. Um, I don't really have any part in the game that does that yet, but it's something to consider. If, if time permits, I'll definitely add something where it just kind of connects to that. Let's see. I'm locked. Okay, where is... That is add villagers. Select villagers, okay. Uh, 
Oh, oh, it's level. That's what I was doing. Is uh, level. Dwarves or elves? Who's better? <laughs> um, I think dwarves are just tougher, uh, stronger. Um, elves are better with arrows, but I think dwarves, you shoot a dwarf with an arrow, he just kind of like pulls it out and says, now I'm just mad. So I think I would go dwarf, you know. Elves are always beautiful, at least, you know, when you watch The Lord of the Rings, right? They're always just like elegant and beautiful, but uh, yeah, there you go, Hawks. Like, yeah, obviously, man. That's not even a question. That's rhetorical, right? You know? Uh, well, elves are pansies and have to fight from a distance. Exactly, right? And dwarves, man, the dwarf women, they have those, you know, great-looking beards, right? <laughs> All right, so that's not... Maybe I actually don't do it. Oh, that's okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, just get in with the axe and get to work. Exactly, right? Yeah. No pointy stick shooting toys. No. Yeah. Yeah. See my axe? I just turned it sideways, and that, that pointy little arrow just kind of like ricochets right off. And now I'm just going to go ahead and cleave you, right? You know? Yeah, so maybe you get a shot off, and you get an arrow in my arm, but, you know, it doesn't matter because your head is about to leave your body. So, yeah. My bet is definitely on the dwarves. I vote for dwarves. Bimley for the win. I don't actually have any elves in mine. Maybe that's maybe that speaks volumes right there that I I have no elves. I got orcs, I got warriors, I got wizards, no elves. They're superior in every way, hands down. Boom, done. That's it. Uh, let's see. Um, Honot. Honoff? Ho uh, Honoff. Hey, welcome, man. Hola, how's it going, man? I'm <laughs> racist against elves, too. <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> yeah. Elves, man. Take it walking. You're just done. <laughs> Hold on, uh, I'm doing well, man. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Um, about to stream, but figured I would drop in and say hello. XD, welcome, man. Um, cool. Uh, did you ever send me your link? Uh, I gotta like dig up yours. I'm gonna make a note here myself so I can uh, check you out. Um, where's my notes? Yeah, throw this over on the side here. So let me do this. Uh, always like to support my other fellow developers too, and uh, jump on their streams when they're working away. Uh, so um, yeah, as Blow the Stone knows, I like dropping in on his stuff. Since he tries to distract me, I like to return the favor to him, of course. But uh, oh, enough, welcome, man. Um, don't know if you've been here before. Don't recognize your name if you had, but I have terrible memory. Uh, but I'll give you a quick rundown if you want to see what I'm up to here. Turn that off. Oops, oops, wrong thing. So, working, not working, actually finishing up a uh, predominantly mobile game. It is a game that I've been working on. Whoa, where did it get there? There we go. Uh, sort of like Angry Birds meets Battleship. So, in case in, in case there's anyone else that hasn't seen this, I guess I haven't played it lately. So, um, it's going to be online cross-platform multiplayer. iOS, Android, PC, Mac. Anyone can play against anyone. Um, if you look at the links below, you can, you can actually try out a beta version for iOS, Android, or uh, PC. Uh, <laughs> rather small, though, no? Yep. So it came out of the fact that we have these villagers here. You can actually have your little dwarf character there. Uh, guns and guns <laughs> better than bows. <laughs> All right. 
So, um, so the gist of it is kind of Angry Birds, right? You target by dragging your finger back, much like Angry Birds. And the objective now is you're actually trying to take out your opponent's bouncing buildings because the bouncing buildings actually power the force field, right? But you see it's not turn-based. That's where it gets interesting because it's real time, right? And these power-ups will pop up occasionally. Whoever shoots the power-up scores it. This stop sign will actually put the opponents to sleep for 15 seconds. So for 15 seconds now, I get to wail away on him, and he gets to do nothing but watch me just destroy him. Like so. Uh, and you see, he sends out villagers to repair buildings. I can do the same, but the AI is kind of stupid on this. Um, the villagers, the catch is the more guys you send out to repair buildings, the fewer you have left on your catapult. So your reload times actually increase. I'm doing a crappy shot here. Oh, come on. There it is. All right, now I'm going to hit this one before he does. Oh. See what I tell you, man. I've been playing this forever, and I still... There it goes. Still mess up half the time. Interesting mechanic. Thanks, man. Uh, I think another thing that needs balance is the stop power-up. Oh, really? How so? You think it's overpowered, or what? Boom. Um, yeah, you think it's way too overpowered? Interesting. Okay. Um, I like it just because I think it's an opportunity. Uh, it, it is a big one to throw a wrench in the works. Uh, to give someone that may be falling behind a chance to really claw back into it. Too much, too much downtime? Huh. Okay. That's an interesting idea. I, um... Hmm. Okay, I have to think about that. Um, so there's three different power-ups. We only saw the, the stop sign come up twice, but there's also a cloud bank, which covers your buildings in fog and a green arrow, which gives you guys double speed for 15 seconds. But that's not a terrible thought. Um, the green arrow will go longer. So you get a speed boost for longer, uh, cloud bank. I think the 15 is fine. Excuse me, because you can still shoot into it, but it's not a terrible notion to actually have the, uh, snooze you know, the sleeping go for only 10 seconds. Hmm. That Mario Kart does. Uh, only give powerful power-ups to the player that is a little behind. Uh, but when a player is ahead, give them small power-ups. I could do that. I could do that. Um, I'm not sure if I want to tweak it so far. Um, because I don't want to be a situation where, you know, if you see a power-up, you don't even bother going for it because you know you're going to get short-changed uh, on it. But, um... And because, I mean, I like the idea of, since it is pure skill, right? It is pure skill. Whoever scores the power-up first, scores it. And, oh, by the way, this is two-player mode. So you can actually play two people at the same time, right? And this gives you an opportunity to play it this way. Uh, uh, Limprasid <laughs> helping with their... <laughs> uh, what happens if a player has the speed power-up and then the second player gets the stop power-up? It never happens. Um, a power-up only pops up when no power up is active, right? So um, there's a random time frame. I think I have it set between five and ten seconds, and that five and ten seconds timer only initiates when there's no power up active. So you will never have any overlap. That that will never happen. That was my simple solution by deciding what happens if someone scores more than one power up, and the simple solution was don't let them do it. So so that's it. Uh, I don't know why it keeps throwing just the the sleeping ones out. I guess just law of averages. Um, but no, that's that's not a terrible idea. I guess I guess there is a valid point that um, I I want it to be good enough that people actually still go for it, right? You know. But you're right. Maybe just having yourself completely incapacitated, right? You know, because the power up, the speed up is your benefit. You know, and it. It doubles your speed. Oh, come on. Seriously? Why are we getting only these? Did I actually have that? Oh, I might have that hard-coded right now. Let me check that. Um, wait for power... Uh, wait for next power up. Let me see. Do I have that hard-coded? No, I don't have that hard-coded. It's just doing law of averages, which is strange. Uh, XD! Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for coming by, man. I appreciate it. Oh, come on. This is crazy. Current power-up should 
I don't know why it's doing like five sleepings in a row. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, have a good stream yourself, and uh, I'll catch up with you soon, man. Thanks for coming by. All right, that's totally bizarre. If it comes up a stop sign again, then I'm going to start investigating. All right, something's wrong here. What the heck? Current power up equals, okay, uh, sleep, so that'd be one. No? So current power up is equal to random range. Yeah. That was just a bizarre series of whatever reasons where it just kept choosing the same stupid power up. You'll not say. <laughs> uh, how long is a reload? It depends on a couple factors. It depends on <clears throat> how many villagers you have on your launcher, and it also depends on the launcher skill set. Um, it's not a significant boost. Um, wait for one of these guys to pop up here again. What the hell? What? This is bizarre. Um, so I mean, you can count off. Um, I don't even remember offhand what the the true timing is. Uh, let's see. Here we go. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. About five seconds. Um, adjustable based on some of the other villagers will build a little bit faster, but not significantly so. Uh, there we go. Finally. Wow. That was freaky. That was like six or seven stop signs in a row. And there's the, the fog bank. Um, what's the reload speed for the best launcher with four guys? Um, let's see, I might have to hack this so I can, uh, yeah, I got all these guys locked. So let me go back to my character and unlock them. In other words, let me cheat. So let me, client user, username, 1252. All right. Go into the data. Boom, icon status, launcher status, uh, original, selected villagers, unlocked, villager status. All right. Let me unlock all these guys. One. Save. Come back out. Uh, is it really called cheating, though, when you are the creator? <laughs> uh, not when it's just for testing purposes. No, I don't think so. Uh, let me just restart this. So I can grab the, the update. No, I always say that just to amuse myself. <laughs> Below the stone. Oh, that's, that is that is sort of becoming the inside joke now, isn't it? When I had an improper setting on the, uh, the percentages. Uh, the win percentage was displaying on mine 104%. And that's when Below the Stone was telling me that I was definitely cheating. And that was just a math error, of course. But <laughs> ever since then, man, Below the Stone is never going to let me live that down. <laughs> Honoff has followed. Thank you so much, Honoff. Thanks, man. Thanks for the follow. Okay, so let's check this out now. So I got everyone unlocked. So we'll throw the wizard out here, and I'm just going to work my way down from best to worst, and I will actually leave him completely off, right? So he's good. Done. And I'll do two players so I can just count this down. All right, you want to count with me here? Here he goes. Aim, f fire. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. So, yeah, that's a 25% uh, boost. A 20, 25% performance boost if you have all the best characters. So, not significant, but enough that it's worth getting them. It's not enough that it becomes a pay-to-win kind of scenario where you now have a total cheat, right? Where you're just reloading tons faster. But you are getting a slight performance boost, right? You're getting a, a you know 20% uh, speed up. So it gives you a little bit of an edge. Um, oh, crap. Wait a second. Why is it still showing the... Uh-oh. Crap. Look at that. I still got the regular villagers here. That's not right. Oh, man. My two-player game might be busted here. I might have to add that to my to-do list. Check that out. Let's do one-player game. And bust it as well. What the heck? Did I not... Did it not save or something? Or... Huh. What happened there? Customize, select villagers. 
That's correct, but it didn't update the villagers correctly. What the heck? Alright, let me exit out and come back in and see if it was a save issue or if something else more nefarious is going on here. So do two-player game. No, it's still just loading up just the base guys. Crap. What the heck? Okay, let me check my player data and see if that got updated correctly. No, oh, it must have because it's displaying it correctly. Hmm, okay. Well, that's going to go on the list. Okay, which is doubly frustrating because it, you know, if you guys watch the stream long enough, you know that it was loading up the, the villagers correctly, but it's not doing it now. So I don't know what I broke. Um, villagers not loading correctly in one player, two player game. <sighs> well, crap. You know, that's the trick, right? Right when you think it's all working, that's when you just realize you missed something. Let me take one more look at this. All right, just out of curiosity, I'll do an online game and see if that loads up correctly. All right, so that's right. Weird. Okay, so when I'm doing an online game, it actually does load up the correct characters. So, okay, we can test this here. Go 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. Yeah. So I think what it's doing was it actually had the values, but it didn't show the characters correctly, I think, or something. I'll dig into that closer. But uh, So there, there is, if you get the, the best villagers and you load it up that way, you get a slight increase in uh, uh, performance in terms of reload. but um, And the same would be true for the, the building as well. But it's, it's much more of a cosmetic thing and less of an actual significant performance change. Because I, I want to keep the games incredibly close so I can make it much more about skill and less about purchasing the best characters. If that makes sense. All right. Let me quit out of this. Mm. That's bizarre. So it's working fine there. But, um, oh, you know what? I think I might know. Um, because it's probably pulling it off of combo, but that should be updated correctly anyways. All right, so let's find out. Um, select two-player game. Uh, select a, uh, opponent selected villagers. Uh, I feel like it would make it better if characters had negatives to them. Um, there's slight differences, you know, I mean, uh, well, you know, it, it's the negatives are some of them have strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so, I mean, there is incentive to like put some in certain positions. So if we look back here, um, you know, the actual numbers, you know, so the, you know, the, the female warrior is just a little bit better. So the male warrior is just the weakest, right? She's an improvement in the running and the recovery category, right? When they get hit by shot. Um, and then for him, the building and recovery is increased. And then here, he's uh, pretty much the reload and the building, right? So, uh, you know, for him, you'd want him to be sort of like more in the front because you know that he'll do better on the repair of the buildings. So, um, you know, and the same for the wizard. Wizard across the board is just an increase. So there is a little bit of it, you know, and... I mean, I get what you're saying, but I really want to steer clear of having any significant shifts in performance and have it much more of a, a cosmetic versus an actual performance change. But, I mean, I want there to be something. So there's at least, in theory, a reason to do it beyond just the graphics. But um, I don't want to shift it significantly. So that's why I have this that way. But, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's a compelling argument to say that there should be... Uh, specific skill sets to them but I just don't know if I want it to go that deep so that's the choice there um, I think it would make it better 
if like the wizard for example had amazing reload but really bad repair yeah yeah um i toyed with that but i mean once again i i just i'm because i want there to be also and i want there to be some room to expand above too because remember we talked about the fact that i want to do different islands right um, so for the different islands, I could see there being significant performance increases, right? But considering this is the default island that any base player is going to play, I really want to try and keep it a level ground, right? But um, the the other islands, I think what will happen is you will only get those when you've leveled up significantly. So you could have different islands that have a disparaging difference, but then you could be playing people with the same same skill set. So you're not going to be playing people with the base island, right? So I can see I can see the future islands having a much greater separation in the character performances. But at least for this first island, I think I want to try and keep it more level. It would be cool to have a tiny bit of character stuff, but hard to uh, hard to balance. Yeah. So I mean, I hope that makes sense. I hope that by leaving this one as sort of like the introductory island, that it is much more of a plateau. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, but then in future islands, introduce much more of that, you know, just have one dude that has a much stronger skill set. Let's see, so I, I'm doing all the opponent stuff here, so... Let's see, um... Opponent, okay, so I'm transferring all that stuff, but... Hmm. So... Selected launchers, selected islands, selected villagers. Um, otherwise, oh, here it is, because I'm hard coding it. Okay. Oh, I'm using get. Oh, I, I think this is it. I just screwed this up right here. I'm saying set string when it should it should be get string. So I'm setting that value instead of retrieving it. Why is the keyboard messing up on me again? There he goes. Uh, how did you do the music and sounds? Um, well, I actually haven't heard much of the music. The music uh, came from a couple of different of uh, resource sites. Um, I think most of it came from a site called, um, oh, what is it called? Sound, I can look it up here. Because um, I do like them. I don't mind giving them a, uh, a plug, but I'm just trying to remember the proper name. Um, sort of assets. Let's see, music. Stock music. There it is. So. Oh, did it change? Oh, I did it wrong place, didn't I? Stock music. Yeah. So this is one of my resources. Uh, is a website called Stock Music. That's um, they're they're much more generous in terms of their their uh, having to pay royalties and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't mind paying for music, but when it, it's one of the things that you have to keep paying uh, for something that I'm just going to use as a background track. And in reality, most people mute music anyways. Uh, I I like these that are a little more uh, lenient on their licensing. So Stock Music um, and then Pond Five is another one that, uh, this is a favorite of mine. I, I'm a big fan of Pond5. Uh, I've been using them for years and years uh, for music and sound effects and that kind of stuff. A um, lot of good sound effects, but also another one is uh, Sound Dogs. Yeah, and Sound Dogs. That's another one of my favorites. So um, actually, I guess I should throw these out here so you guys can click on them easier. So Sound Dogs is a great resource, I believe for doing sound effects and then pond 5 is fantastic actually pond 5 is a great resource across the board for for images as well as videos as well as music and sound effects uh, music especially and then stock music of course is more or less just what we're talking about for uh, music so those are pretty much my primary resources um, some of it also comes from some of the the stuff that you find on the asset store as well. There's a little bit of mix in there as well. There might be, I think I have one track that might come from this. 
Or maybe not. Actually, I don't think so. I think most of it comes from Pond5 and uh, the sound music stuff. But um, that's it. So, I mean, none of it's actually me. I mean, I'm not... I, I, um, I take no credit for actually creating any of the, the music or sound effects. Not a strong suit for me, so I wouldn't even bother trying. Excuse me. All right, so I think that's where I was messing up right there. It's a two-player game where I'm just, instead of, let me clear that out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I see what I was, oh, what was that trying, oh, I was setting opponent. Okay, so no, that was correct. Set, set, no, so I take it back. That was actually the correct thing to do for that, but, um, so that's just setting up the, the opponent, but then where are we actually pulling this stuff from? Huh. All right, I'm gonna have to dig deeper because that's frustrating that the online match loads it up correctly, but the single and local two-player is not. Uh, let's see, take sorting order. All right, so if I go um, villager underscore, oh really? Okay. Hmm. Let me think about this for a second here. If I get my prefabs, island, go red team, villagers, uh, yeah, villager one. So let's just, villager one. Uh, have you ever used uh, auto automata for music? Uh, considering I can't even pronounce the name, uh, means I've never even heard of it. Uh, I'll, I'll take a look though. Automata. Generative uh, musical sequencer. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So a sequencing tool. Um, I have not played with any kind of sequencing tools. Um, I'm a much bigger fan of just sort of like taking what's already pre-made. Um, part of it is just I don't feel like I have the time. And part of it is if I started playing with sequencers, I would like fall into it like crazy. And want to just like spend so much time making all kinds of, of tracks and stuff. But I'll give it a bookmark for sure. Let me throw this over here. Um, done. There. Yeah, I got that on a bookmark now, so I can check that out later. It's so easy. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll definitely give it a look. But yeah, completely new to me. Hadn't heard of that. Um, I messed with a couple of the ones before, which is much more of a just sort of like, uh, like taking components and throwing it together. But uh, more of like just pre-made clips and less about really mixing on your own or anything like that. So, but yeah, I'll check that out for sure. All right. All right, so where am I here? Yeah, so this is... Okay. Join is equal to temple and villager. Oh, wait. Uh, why am I hard coding that? Get string villager one. Okay. So, what I want to find is where I'm actually setting that. Set string. Temp villager one. All right, so it's pulling the values right here. 
Extract villagers. Oh, you know what? I may only be doing extract villagers on the online game. That might explain it. Hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. So let me try and... Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I added the extract villager so it pulls the data uh, from the stored server, but I may not actually be applying that to the local games. So... So game controller... Select two-player game. Throw it right here. Extract villagers. Um, red villagers. We'll do both. So we'll go. There. So that kicks off the red and the blue. So let's see if that's enough to fix it right there. Let's see. Yeah, check it out. So that was it. I was just um, I had I was extracting the villager data on the online game, but foolish me wasn't actually applying that to the local game. So that fixed the two player. So that's good, as it should be. All right. So the one player. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll just do the same too, because we're just gonna match. So yay, this is going to be an e easy fix, I think. Go uh, select, uh, is it single? Select, oh wait, I got this. Oh, come on. Uh, start. Select local game, there it is. So if it's online simulated, we don't want to mess with those values. Um, but otherwise, if it's not, then we're going to do it that way. Good. All right, let's check it. That should be all I need to get both the, the one player and the two player local working correctly. Let's find out. Fixed. Sweet. <laughs> oh, I love the simple fixes. Two lines of code in two different places. I like the, I don't know if you noticed, but the wizard, it's kind of funny. He doesn't run. He actually floats to and from the buildings. It's just kind of cute touch. He even does the same thing, too. When they go in the water, he, nev he actually never goes in the water. He just floats above it. So the shark chases him, but he's actually sort of like skiing above the water. I'm going to zing him. Boom. There he goes. Yeah, and th there you go. There's a demonstration of, like, uh, the damage. Uh, so if you watch, the uh, the ogre actually kind of, like, does a duck and cover and has to look around. But the wizard just, like, throws his wand up for, like, a brief second and goes right back to work. So for him, there's, like, no damage. But you see the, the ogre takes longer to actually start working again. So that's that's just that's a demonstration of the slight difference in terms of like the damage and how they take it, you know, how they bounce back. Um, you know, for the other characters, it, it's actually much longer than that too. So there is, you know, like we we're talking about before, there is a slight difference. But I can see on future islands having a much bigger separation in terms of uh, the performances, right? And having certain characters do certain tasks much much better than the others. But for the first island, I'm going to keep it much more of a flat difference. So it's a, a just a, you know, across the board, since that's the first thing people are getting started with. And you see the little wizard. He does a little jump up in the air and spins down. And she has, like, a little cheerleader move. And the ogre's doing his happy dance left and right. So, good. So that's fixed. Yay. Come back out of that. All right. Come back to my list. Um...
Mark that done. Throw that there. All right, so, and then I'll check that offline because I gotta throw that on Android and there's no way for you guys to watch that stuff. Uh, I don't have that configured today, so. Uh, if the player levels up, pop up a menu. Oh, that's what I was working on. So I'll come back to that. I think I, let's see, I'm, I'm after four o'clock now. Um, I guess I could try and squeeze that in real quick. It shouldn't take too long because we're only going to update it when he reaches a new level. Let's see where I'm at. Um, oh, crap. <laughs> I I reset my level, but I forgot to reset my villagers. So <laughs> that's kind of unfair thing right now, isn't it? Let me go back and fix that. That's the problem with cheating is that sometimes you forget to cheat across the board. All right. So my villagers... Currently at 7,700. I'm going to drop that to zero on me. Zero. All right. Let's check that again. <clears throat> All right. Yes. All right. Cool. So now we should be able to play a online game. And then if we're, vi we're going to go ahead and version up... Let's see. Okay, so I have level up value, and also I need the level up menu. So let me do public. I can do. Um, I can need public on both. So you just drag and drop on those. Public game object. Um, up menu. All right. And let's wire those guys up. All right, game controller. Oops. Scroll down to the bottom where they are. And let me find them now. Gameplay. Online game over. Level up menu. Level up value. Done. Okay. So, uh, player level. Let's see. Okay. Ah, uh, crap. Where did I have that stored? Is it in combo? I keep forgetting my place on that, don't I? Um, game controller. Um, oh, it's, uh, it's villagers. Should have bookmarked it or something. Player level, no, yes. All right, that's not it. There's get and there's... Really? Okay, I've completely lost my thought on this, where it is. <laughs> Oh, mercy. Yeah, so I went down like three different paths to tweak other things, and I'm coming back to this, and I can't remember where that stupid code lives. Oh, man. The next game is going to be done proper with subsets of code and all the different... <laughs> and all the, the separate uh, scripts. Because this is a nightmare. And I know that's not the way to do it proper. Okay. Let's see. So, we know it's under game over. All right. Then we know. Oh, if I could type right. 
Game over, and we know it's online match. All right. Add new villagers. <clears throat> there it is. Finally. <clears throat> In this case, let me say, um, Menu, set active to true. Transform local, I always do that. Local scale, equal to new, factor three, and I do not use zero because for whatever reason, in GUI sometimes freaks out and the children, especially the text objects, sometimes get like squished and don't come back up. So I just use, I, I find if I use a 0 .01, then it behaves. All right, and then we do, uh, do scale. And then we want it to be um, three, one. How long? Let's say half a second. Try that. Let's set ease, uh, ease. And we have it go out back. So we're using the um, uh, do tween. So we scale it down to like almost zero, right? And then do tween will scale it up to one, but we use the ease out back so it kind of overshoots and recovers. And then, as we're doing that, we say, uh, let's see, uh, text value. Oh, crap. Text is now equal to, and then what is our new, let's see. I'll just grab this guy since he just got updated like so to string since that's an object that should do it all right we'll do a quick check here let's see Sets it to on. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Do online game real quick. All right. So this is level one. So I'm going to just destroy this bot. He's going to be missing everything. But that's fine. Oh, crap. Now put his guys to sleep. There we go. And just walk through these buildings real quick. Like so, like so. Ah. Oh, come on. There you go. Almost done here. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, there it goes. Good. Oh, it came up too fast, didn't it? Okay. Okay, so it, uh, yeah, so it should come up there. Um, I must have it already turned on. I think that's what I did. 
Okay, but it came up right. It just came up a little early. And probably a little fast. I might slow that down a little bit. But it did the value correct, so that's good. All right. So I'm going to run in the bathroom and do one more restroom break. And then I'll come back and I'll get that fixed up. And I think that'll do it for today. But uh, hang tight, hang tight, guys. And I'll be... All right, I'm back. What'd I miss? Uh, just made this. Uh, let's check it out. <laughs> Looks like somebody watches zero punctuation way too much. <laughs> Superior dwarf master race. <laughs> Inferior trio king elf. <laughs> Filthy goblin. Stupid fat hobbits. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Yes, definitely a zero punctuation watcher, aren't you? <laughs> that's good. That's funny stuff, man. <laughs> Alright. So, let me figure out. Um, I must have actually had the online... No, I didn't have it. Um... Turned on. Oh, there it is. Um, had the winning menu turn turned on by default. That's where I'm. Uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you know it. <laughs> Grammar is the least of my concern. Yeah, you and me both, man. You know, since the advent of spell check, you know, we only have to be like in the neighborhood, right? I'm especially like, you know, when like search something on Google. Yeah, close-ish, and you're you're pretty much all set. All right, so let me take another stab at that, see if I can get the timing correct. Uh, yeah, just as long as it gets the message across. Yeah, and I totally got it. <laughs> Dwarves rule, man. We're taking the hobbits to Isengard. You guys have seen that, right? I mean, it's a million years old at this point, so I'm assuming all you guys have seen the... We're taking the hobbits to Isengard. Um, all right, so let me see if I can delay this. Um, is this, yeah, unfortunately it's a regular function, so, I'll do a void, show, um, level up, let's see, show level up menu, yeah, and then I'm going to grab all this crud. Drop it down in here. And then we'll do an invoke. 
I guess we'll let's see. Start with like one second, maybe. Uh, delay it one second. Um, and then make that go for three quarters of a second. Um, you know what? Actually, I try two. What the heck? One one thousand, two one thousand. Yeah. Okay. And let me reset my values. Gems, level, set that back to one. All right. And villager, villagers. Excuse me. Okay. That was strange. It actually said zero. Should have been more than that. Let's see. I have five to ten. Okay, good. Unless it wasn't getting saved. Alright, we'll try this and we'll check our values. <clears throat> Alright. So, what we're doing is trying to track down the uh, the level up menu that pops up and make sure that it, it looks like it's popping up correctly and at the right time. So, suffer through another match here. If I can turn on the sound effects if it's not too loud. Oh. <laughs> so, I, I unmuted here on Unity, but I forgot that I actually muted uh, sound effects and music, so that didn't do much good. I'll put that back on. So, no game sound effects for you guys. Sorry. You just have to download it and do it yourself. Speaking of, download leaks are just down below us. Uh, down, down below me there on the uh, Twitch page. Which, actually, come to think of it, I transfer these videos over to YouTube. So, I should put those links on the YouTube page as well, shouldn't I? Just thought of that. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So I'm referencing links, and someone watching this on YouTube is kind of going, what links? All right, so that should do it. Done. Ah, oh, and they're still coming up now. Crap. Okay, so I'll do it when the U1 menu comes up, because that should... Oh, weird. Level two. Huh. Okay. So we won't do that here. So we'll save that for later on. Let's see. I have to get going now, uh, but I enjoyed the stream. See you next time. Cuckies. Uh Hey, man, thanks for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, uh, oh, nice. Thank you, man. 100 bits. Thank you so much. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you, man. That is by far my, my most generous offer right there on bits. Thank you. So cool. Um, but, yeah, I hope you can come back, man. I'm here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so yeah, come on back, man, because I'm, I'm just finishing up the game and then I'm going to work on a gameplay trailer and then I'm going to start working on the next game, which is going to be really interesting. I keep teasing it, but trust me, you guys are going to be going, oh, that's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, man, in the meantime, thanks for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it, man. Uh, I'll be sure to, uh, catch the next stream. Awesome. Yeah, here you go. I'll do the manual version. Bye. Because I'm too lazy to figure out what the, uh, the emoji is for waving. So I'll just do it this the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, man. See you next time. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Oops, I'm way over here. Um, show winner menu. Good. Let's see. All right, so... So that's there. You've host. 
the coins. Huh. Uh, winning villager. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Actually, oh, crap. That's level up. I'm remarking out the villager stuff. I don't want to do that. Um, so I'll just delay that for half a second. And that should be sufficient. And that should mean everyone's up to date, I hope, at that point. So, um, if not, I can just cheat it by adding a plus one to it. So let me check this. Let me try this again. And blank out the values. Come back here. Level, switch them back to one. Select a villager, villagers. Why is that still zero? That's scary. That actually should be like 10 or something. Hmm. All right, I'll definitely have to revisit that. Oh, no, 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 because it's set. No, sorry, that is correct. Because when you, when you version up to new level, it goes back to zero. So zero is actually correct there. Good, okay. Uh, I forgot about that. It's not a running total, it's just the current level that you're accruing the villagers. So that is a correct value. <clears throat> All right, who should I start off with? We'll go after the little guy in the corner here. Oh, and overshot it. And he hit it perfectly. There he goes. All right, so I think I have this all dialed in correctly. Uh, I think it should show the proper value, and now it's going to delay it until after it finishes showing all the the uh, stuff you won. Um, you know what? Actually, I have to add this because you can still win villagers when you lose. So I'm going to have to add this code to both the winning and losing side. Um, I'd be disrespectful because it's the computer. I'd be a jerk to the computer. There it goes. Yeah, I like it. That's the popping up there. I think is fine. Jumps on your face and you see it. <clears throat> so that's cool. So I gotta make sure I add that to losing as well. So. And that's going to be harder to test because the AI takes forever to beat me when he has a low ranking. But we'll just assume this is correct. So once it shows villagers. Oh, wait, wait. No, actually, crap. You know what? That's wrong. Um, okay. I need to do it this way. Um... Show level up menu. So right now it's set up that the level up menu pops up every single time you play, which is totally incorrect. So we do a bool. Show level up menu. Um, we say do show equals false. <clears throat> Add new villagers. Oops. There. So then, if we're leveling up, then I tell it, oops. Uh, do show level up menu equals true. There it goes. So now we go back here and we say if do show. So if we did 
actually increase our level ranking by one, then show the menu. There. And we'll add the same down here to the show loser menu because they got their villagers too. So that should fix it. So I'm going to play it one more time. And at this time, um, I'm going to finish the game and the, the level up menu should not pop up because I'm just starting on level two and that requires me to win 100 villagers. And I'm not going to win 100 villagers. Oh, actually, I guess I will, won't I? Hmm. Because if you win a game, I think I give you 100 villagers. So uh, this will boost me. And then I have to do it a second time. And then it should not show it. If that makes any sense. So we're level 2. And level 2 requires 100 villagers to move on to level 3. And just by winning this game, that should push us into that realm. And if not, then something's wrong with my math anyways. Yeah, I'll knock these guys out. Boom. Nice. <clears throat> yep. There we go. So, and yeah, definitely give the game a try, guys. If you want to give it a play, uh, iOS, Android, and don't forget the PC version down there as well. PC version even lets you play two-player on the same PC, just one with the uh, keyboard and one using the mouse. There's a little readme file in there that shows you how to do it, but the, the V key toggles uh, the different... Yeah, so we went up a level. That's good. Um, the V key toggles how many villagers go out, and the R is for repair, but it's in the readme file. All right, so let me check. Now we should have to win a lot more. Yeah, we have to win 200 villagers. So for the final time, I'll play one more game, and this time we're going to... I'm going to win, I'll get 100 villagers, but that won't be enough to push us into the next level threshold. And fire. Done. Done. Just wiping them out. There you go, buddy. Go for the cloud. Go for the fog bank. Still won't save you. You're doomed. Yep. I'm still going to hit your buildings. I think it's here. Yep. Uh, crap, where's the other one? All right, I'm going to hit their guys just to reset them. Maybe it's over here somewhere. Oh, I was so close. Did you see that? Almost hit that last one. And there we go. He's doomed. There it is. All right, I'll go disrespect. So now we should not see the level up menu if this all goes right. And we don't. Good, perfect. So that's plugged in and working correctly. So I will take that off the list. Nice. Actually, I thought that one would take longer, but that one kind of banged out pretty quickly. like that okay uh yeah oh this is something i want to change too so people have asked me a few times how do i know if i'm playing a bot or not right well one dead giveaway is um if you're ever playing uh the blue player then you know you're playing a human because right now the ai is always blue so i need to fix that um i just need to uh, i have the the code set up but it's it's kind of old and broken so i need to take the AI playing the red player and extract that and switch that over so it works on the blue side as well. Uh, let's see, what else we got? So I got to uh, set it up so if you create a guest account, right, and if you buy stuff, you know, and if you wipe out your your file and reload it, you'll get a new guest account and all the stuff you bought will disappear, which sucks. So I want to have an option that allows you to, even after you start playing as a guest, to connect it to a Google Play account um, or uh, also... Uh, iOS as well to the Game Center account uh, as long as you haven't already paired that account with another you know as long as that that doesn't already exist right 
So if you have a, a Google Play account and then you do like a guest account and both of them have stuff, then you can't merge, right? You're just going to have to like sign up for another Google Play account or something or just keep playing as guest. Um, add clicks to the sound effects. Right now there's only a couple buttons that actually have click sounds. I need to go through all the buttons and just tag those onto that. I have a little script so that won't take too long, I think. Uh, ability to show news at game start. I still need to do that. Um, the code's there. It's just right now there's nothing to retrieve. So I need to do a proper display to test showing news. Uh, that'd be great. So you guys can get updates when I finally get like new buildings or new features or bug fixes. That'll pop up at the beginning. Oops, sorry. Uh, they'll pop at the beginning and you'll know uh, what is happening. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. In online game, when playing is blue, move reds. Oh, and that's a little tweak. That's just making the force field shift a little bit. Uh, this is the big one. Uh, tweaking the AI, right? That's the one that's going to be a little more time consuming. So I'm going to jump on that pretty soon. But I'll move those actually further down here because they're bigger beasts. Uh, oh, and then this is a quirky one, right? Uh, why is the AI sending out villagers main menu? So it's, it's sort of like even though the game resets and it should be wiping the slate clean, sometimes it looks like the AI will continue to sort of like play in the background, which is kind of weird. Uh, at least the villagers are like going out and repairing phantom buildings. Um, it doesn't really break anything. It doesn't affect the game. It's just and the only time you even notice it is if you're looking at the logs and you see the error message pop up. Or you can see like the repair meter sometimes pop up in the screens randomly. Uh, do you think of any specialized building? Like ones that can take an extra hit or slowly regenerate themselves? Um, I thought about that. But part of me also is, is scared about the, the play balance. I mean, you know, kind of it, what I'm doing is, is kind of a cheat. Uh, it's kind of a wimp out kind of thing where everything just takes one hit. Um, in the initial prototype, I actually had it set up where you had to hit the buildings twice. You know, so the first one hit and they would bounce and then they would smoke, which, by the way, is where the bounce comes from. The bounce comes from the initial hit, right? But I took that out because people were getting kind of confused by that. You know, and then the idea of having like uh, health bars on all the buildings show up, I thought was just getting too kind of busy. So in the end, I just sort of like decided to wipe the slate clean and just say, okay, every building gets one hit done, you know. So uh, maybe something I might visit, you know, in sort of like more advanced islands. But on this initial one, yeah, I'm going to keep it super simple, right? I mean, this is much more geared towards casual game players and less towards like Fortnite hardcore game players uh let's see i still need to fix the leaderboard right now it's loading all the records which takes for forever uh balance is rough when dealing with a game like this absolutely you know and i mean i appreciate everyone playing it but it's it's still in order to get the really nuanced balance on an online game like that it would just be a total big investment uh simplicity is good <laughs> yeah i agree uh, yeah, someone else mentioned this too about adding a randomized uh, time delay. So when you're looking for an online match, you know, right now if it's five seconds, then it's definitely a bot. But if I mix it up, then it's a little harder to tell if you're playing a human or AI. So, and I really want to try and make that invisible. You know, every game you play, I don't want you to be spending your time thinking, oh, this is a bot or this isn't. You know, maybe it's in the back of your head, but ultimately I want you to play a game and not be sure. And if so, then I've done my job. And then we get down to the final big stuff, which is uh, revising the AI to make it more human-like. And then, of course, i got to add the old GDPR stuff so so Europe doesn't hate me. So I can get the game legal over there. So that's kind of the last thing I want to plug in. But that's it, guys. Uh, this is not my beta list. This is actually my release list. So if I can plow through these and handle any other issues that you guys find uh, you know, in the meantime... Uh, then I will plow through it. But otherwise, if I can shoot through this list, I'm going to put it out there and start working on the gameplay trailer next. So, burning through this pretty quickly. Uh, the AI revision is definitely going to be a bit of a time sink. But aside from that, we're going to be in good shape. But that's it. I think I'm going to wind down right here. Uh, thank, thank you all for hanging out. Yeah, trailer. Gameplay trailer. Yes, yes. <laughs> Coming. Uh... I already got the scratch track recorded, but I'm going to do that right. So it should be pretty fun. Time consuming, but it'd be fun. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for everyone hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. It makes it so much more enjoyable for me. And I hope it's not too boring for you. But uh, yeah, 
definitely definitely come back uh monday wednesday and friday start at 1 p.m pacific standard time adjust to your time zone and um uh good stream thanks blow the blow the stone thanks man thank you so much i appreciate that um and definitely check out the game and you see the links down below but just in case you missed them i will do my my gratuitous plugs here um if you have not joined me on discord um please do of course this doesn't go to blow the stone because we're already connected but uh, anyone else that wants to give a shout to me outside of the stream i can always be reached on discord i'm pretty much always on there um you have the links down below but i'll go ahead and repost them all here just in case you missed there you go. There is the Android version, iOS version, and the PC version. And I'll be updating them pretty soon. I'm trying to decide. I want to get most of the stuff plugged in so you guys can get the, the nearly totally done version and play with that one. But I may do an update in between now and then. And then finally, I'll do this. I'll add this one as well. There you go. There is my, my actual web page if you want to check out some of my other games. And finally... If you want to check out one of the older streams that Twitch no longer has, head on over to YouTube and you can find my uh, older collection of videos on there as well as other gameplay videos and just other stuff I've done over the years. You can always find it there. But I think that'll do it for today. Uh, a lot of good headway. Thanks so much for you guys keeping me company and always making it fun. So, um, but that's it. So guys take care and I hope you guys can make it back on Wednesday. Uh, if not, check out the stream uh, after it's already lo loaded up. Just one of the previous ones if you want. But until then, you guys take care, and I hope to see you on Wednesday. Easy for me to say. All right, guys. Take care. Adios.